What's up, YouTube? It is the day before the Boston Marathon. Chris Schaub is here with Kyle Merber, and we've actually never done this before, where we're open up the Sidious Mag airwaves to just random people. This is a blind speed dating concept where we want to tap into the running community at the masses level, not the elite side of things for once. We want to just hear people's stories of, you know, their history with the Boston Marathon, like how they qualified, you know, where's the craziest place that they've trained and, uh, you know, what this race means to them. You've never... I've never, never run, run it, Boston. so I'm, I'm interested to learn. Yeah. But, I mean, this is a conversation that we're having with people all weekend long. Everyone you run into tells you a little bit about their Boston story, and now we're going to have the opportunity to do it on air in yeah. person. And just, like, we literally do not know who the next guest on the show is going to be. We have not prepped. We have no bios for them. We can't look up stats. So, literally... It's going to be random, and I, and I love that. And so we're, we're live on YouTube. We're gonna, I guess that's the recommended way of experiencing this whole thing would be if you're listening to this in podcast form, watching it on YouTube, you'll get to see who the people are. But I'm excited. Let's see who we have up. All right, so let's wait and see who our first guest is going to be. I think we've got quite a few people. Right there. Bring that guy on the show for us. Mac, Mac is going to be our wrangler. So we've got lots of programming happening here in Boston from the Sidious Cafe presented by Hoka. Also the Hoka Fly Lab where people can All test right. out the... First stop. All right, we got our first guest. Grab this mic. Introduce yourself. What's your name? Where you're from? To the Sidious Mag podcast listeners, welcome to the show. My name is JT Chestnut. I live in Los Angeles, California. And is this your first Boston, 20th Boston? Like, where are we at? And what, what's this race mean to you? This is my first Boston. And, you know, this race means a lot to me because of the fact, you know, everyone's always a vision of running in Boston, the Boston Marathon. And for me, you know, in my 20s, I've always wanted to train for Boston and do this and do that for Boston, but the math wasn't mathing. Um, you know, at the time when I was really running hardcore and aggressively in my 20s, I was partying as well too. So I was working a lot, I was drinking a lot, I was just doing a lot of crazy things in the 20s and living in LA. And I just said to myself, you know what? When Boston happens, it's gonna happen at a time when I'm ready for it. And it's very special because tomorrow on Marathon Day, I'll be celebrating three years and six months of sobriety. Oh, my God. Congratulations. So, there you know, go. it's just such a wonderful moment that I know being at the age of 35, embracing life, embracing beauty, embracing the running community, running on these infamous streets. Tomorrow's going to be great. Party pace. I'm just ho I'm going to be hoping for like a finishing time at 340, 345. Oprah Ugly Cry is going to happen on the finish line. So, yeah, definitely. That's the cool part about Boston is just, like, you can look at other races, whether it's, like, Chicago or any of these flat ones as, like, performance races. Boston is always, like, a celebration. Definitely. And so for you, I mean, you know, you were at our ShakeOut run, and just the positivity that you spew to people, do you bring that also to actual, like, race day? All day, every day. What I always tell people is, like, listen, honey, we're all going to the same finish line different times but we're all going to the same finish line what's the rush what's the rush i was like what and i'm like why are you frowning smile because if you smile you run faster why are you frowning like that i call him out i'm like because you know you have the names on the bib i'm like peter what is wrong with you <laughs> smile then he's like okay bro i'll smile and i'm like marianne why are you frowning he's like i'm so nervous i'm like relax girl breathe and it's just all about the positivity because running brings people together whether they want to admit it or not we're a community and if you find someone who happens to want to isolate in the running community, well, you know where they're going to be. They're going to be alone, and they're not going to have that connection. And you can, and you can see them from a distance. You can feel that energy. It's easy to get them smiling at the, the last quarter mile of the race. Where is it most important or most difficult to get other people smiling? The most difficult 
time to get people to smile is at the beginning because everyone is so into their mental space. It's like, listen, smile. You're going to do a great job. You're going to finish. And that's all that matters. If you're so into your little zone, listen, I understand we all have a zone, but if you're so focused where you're just isolating yourself, that's not cool. The point to point course, you have no choice but to finish. Hey Amen. You got to get there. You got to get there. As long as you're doing it with a good spirit, you'll be good to go. So definitely. What is uh, the race that's brought, like, this is your first boss, and do you expect to be, like, emotional at the very end? Oh, or, definitely. Like, what's the most emotional you've been at a race? Okay, in the words of Whitney Houston, I get so emotional, baby. You know what? We have to put that plug in right there. You know the deal, gentlemen. Um, the most emotional that I ever got at the race was actually two moments. One, Whitney Houston just died, like, after, like, my 23rd birthday or something back in 2012. And I ran the LA Marathon. That was my first marathon. So I ran in honor of her and then the rest of the year. But the most emotional that I was was um, Dublin Marathon. Uh -huh. I went to Ireland to run the Dublin Marathon uh, October of 2022. And I put in the work that summer. I was waking up at 4.30 in the morning. I was starting my career in higher education. And I woke up, um, ran the marathon, PR, did 327. And as I'm wrapping up, I'm trying not to get emotional. I'm going through the finish line. And this Irish woman was like, come here, love. And I came over to her, and she was like, you did it. Welcome home. And I was like, ah! <laughs> and I was just sobbing. So that's the most emotional I've ever gotten. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, JT, good luck. You know, good luck. go out and crush it. Kyle, Chris, brother, always a pleasure oh, just yeah, to see brother. you guys, you know, you're always present. I really appreciate your hard work, but real talk, I really thank you for the inclusivity and the wonderful and the beautiful vibes that you bring within the running community. It's amazing. You're the best. You're I know. I know. <laughs> you're telling me these Show things. Show the nails off to the camera. What did you got going on? I got the nails for the Boston Marathon, you know, I got to put people in their place and just do like that <laughs> with the nails and everything. So that's going to be happening a lot tomorrow. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Did you get one of our bags, the Sidious bag? I did. Okay. Yes, TraderJones.com. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to be doing that a lot. Amazing. Well, thanks for joining us, JT. Thank you. Find us another person to get on. Well, Francesco's right. Oh, yeah. Get Francesco next. That was fun, guys. Yeah, of course. Oh, we got to get a selfie going here. We are live. We're still live. We're rolling. It's on YouTube right now. You are live on the air. Oh, shit. Okay. Tap Francesco on the shoulder. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Yep. Yep. We've got, we're going to go anywhere from five to ten minutes. All right. So, introduce yourself, where you're from, what's your deal, what's your Boston story? <laughs> yeah, I'm from New York City. My name is Francesco Magisano. Um, I'm totally blind, and I run with Achilles, and we have about 65 athletes with all different disabilities. Uh, running tomorrow. So we're just very excited to be here just as a runner myself, but then also with my team. Is this your first Boston? How many have you done before? I've done uh, two Bostons before. So this will be my third. Um, I've done New York City marathons for the most part. And it's also cool just to see a new neighborhood, right? You get to hear. I'm totally blind, so I don't get to see <laughs> the neighborhoods, but I can hear the different sounds and they all sound really different, which is cool. That's so interesting. Yeah. So obviously, I'm from New York. We're both from New York City. Oh, you are right yeah. on. Okay, so, cool. So you know, when I go on, you know, runs on Tuesday nights or you know, long runs on Saturdays, yeah. you know, I see the bright like you, you see of these. The yeah. We call it blindingly yellow. You know, <laughs> little uh, blind joke right there. <laughs> and, and just like the community yeah. element of Achilles, and just how you know you have sometimes like pretty fast runners who are just like, you know what, I'm gonna slow down to you know give you know my skill set to be able to help other people who, you know, maybe aren't as capable of running on their own. 
you know, it's such a beautiful thing. How did kind of Achilles come into your life? Yeah, so I actually had no idea of adaptive sports or adaptive running growing up. Um, I never ran a mile in my life. Um, and then I completely randomly came across a, a guide for Achilles in a grocery store. And that was six, seven years ago. Told me about adaptive running, completely changed my life. I've run, you know, obviously marathons and stuff now and never would have imagined doing it before meeting this guy. So, yeah, and it's, it's definitely a strong bond. I ran, so I, we, we have a partnership with Hoka. I run with Hoka. So I ran with Mike Wardy in New York City Marathon last, uh, two years ago. And that's the exact example, right, of someone super fast, way faster than I am, choosing to slow down to help me kind of navigate this race course. Um, I say the one really annoying part is that I'm going at my max, like out of breath, and he's just chilling, like <laughs> high and just chatting. He's like, you know, how you feeling? It's like mile 18. I'm like, God, I'm feeling awful, man. Like, pretend to breathe hard at least, you know? <laughs> so I guess obviously on race day, you have that guide there to, yeah. to help you along the way. Tell me about training. How does that work on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, so the, the cool thing about Achilles is we uh, provide guides, not just for races, but mostly for training, right? Because you're right, like race day is important, but the training getting to race day is even more important. Um, and so I get to run with all different types of people, all different backgrounds. That's the cool part, right? Like you meet people and you're literally tied to them with a tether for four miles to 20 miles. So you're just there making conversation, learning about each other. It's just, it's a great way to, to meet people. So I'm putting it out there now, now officially that we're like on the record, cameras are rolling. I mean, we're here yeah. like recording this live. It's one of my goals is to, to run a race for Achilles at some point. I think like a half marathon or a 10K would yeah. be awesome. If someone is interested, like what should they know about how to get involved in it? And at the same time, I guess like the first step is it's sort of like the, the question in everyone's head is like, well, so how much faster do I have to be than the other person to like help them out? So like, what, what, what do I have to know? Yeah. So AchillesInternational.org, right? That's where you can find a chapter, you sign up, you get linked up with an athlete, all that stuff. So that, that's step one. It's helpful if the guide is 10%, give or take faster than the athlete, right? Because you don't want to be going at your max while you're guiding because yeah. you're trying to, you know, be aware of obstacles in the road, cracks in the pavement, all that stuff. So you don't have to be like extremely faster than your athlete, but comfortably faster is helpful, um, which obviously gets harder and harder the faster the athlete gets, the harder it is to find really fast guides, right? Like we have athletes who are running Boston tomorrow at, you know, 240, 245, and wow. trying to find a guide who's willing to, you know, not race themselves, guides a, a fast athlete like that. It's, it's a little harder, but yeah. Well, you and I will race. I didn't realize you're in New York City. So yeah, you and yeah. I will definitely run together. I love it. And anyone else interested, right? AchillesInternational.org. <laughs> um, how, how big is it just kind of globally? Because like yep. I know there's a, a huge New York chapter in the States. It's pretty big. But like you guys have a presence at like all the major marathons. Yeah. So we have about 4,000 members wow. in the New York City metro region. I lead New York City metro for Achilles. So I work at Achilles. Uh, that's my job, but we have over 65 chapters around the world. So like Boston, Chicago, LA, big places like that. But then also like Mongolia, Tokyo, Norway, you know, Peru, like all different places like that. How did you ever envision or think that like this is where running was going to take you? I never, I thought running was, I, I didn't really understand the point of running before I became <laughs> a runner. I was like, why, like, am I running from something? Am yeah, I we're still trying to figure toward, it out. Yeah, like, why <laughs> are we running? Like, really, you know? And then I started running. I'm like, oh, all right. I, I, I don't quite understand yet, but I get it. <laughs> like, now, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're running together. So it's community, right? Like, people show up, especially to Achilles, people show up because they want to get fitness or get health, right? Like health access is really big in the disability community where there's so many people who have a disability who don't have access to basic like fitness and health and stuff like that. So like that's obviously really important and shouldn't be understated. But then people show up for the community too, right? Like all of my friends are now at Achilles. We go out for drinks after a run, you know, go out for coffee. Like it becomes your whole life basically. Uh, yeah. So I ran uh, the 2021 New York City Marathon with Joe Park, a mutual friend. Uh, Dr. Joe! Dr. Joe. Before his Instagram was, you know. Yeah, before he like, kind yeah. of blew up as yeah. an Instagram He's my boy. Influencer. I've raced so many races with him. That's yeah. so funny. And so <laughs> he's, he's kind of told me just a lot of stories of how he's gotten personally involved with, with Achilles. Uh-oh. And <laughs> no, well, he, just, he just loves it. All good things. All good things. All good things. <laughs> and like even running the marathon. Yeah. I mean, for you, I guess, like, what is, you guys have also tapped into Neve Shulman, like, yeah. how important is that also just to, like, to 
get the word out about Achilles. That's right. So I'm I'm running Boston with Neve tomorrow. Okay, nice. Yeah. And it, it, having people with you know a network like Neve, like Mike Wardian, people, um, it's helpful because it just raises awareness, right? It it raises awareness for runners to come and volunteer and become guides because obviously we need guides, but it also raises awareness in the disability community, right? Like me as a an 18 year old high schooler had no idea that this existed and growing up totally blind in New York City, right? So like, we're just trying to make sure that other people with disabilities also are aware of this opportunity. Like I, I ran Neve, uh, I, ran, I ran with Neve New York City last November and we did, you know, some TikTok stuff, Instagram stuff and literally got athletes who are blind joining us because they saw that stuff on social media and never knew anything about adaptive sports or adaptive running before then, right? Like that's the really special thing we're trying to do. Amazing. What makes a good guide besides the ability to be 10% faster? Uh, you got to banter. Banter is helpful, right? Like three hours into a race or if you're racing ultras, I do some ultras and whatnot. You got to have the jokes, the one-liners, and you just got to roll with the punches, right? Anytime you do stuff with para or with, you know, a person with a disability, things never are as cut and dry and go to plan, right? Like always things will happen. If you can roll with it and kind of laugh it off, that's, that's really the mark of a good guide but also just good running buddy amazing well francesco yeah. we wish you the best of luck Thanks. in uh tomorrow's race uh if you've got you got any parting words of wisdom for people i guess who, who might be racing tomorrow or have another race coming up uh, i'd say if you see yellow on the course if you see achilles the chant is go achilles we all love that um and yeah don't don't let any barrier disability or otherwise define what you think you can do amazing well thank you so much good for luck. joining us yeah. right on man thanks Sweet. I didn't know you know Joe Park, man. That's yeah, so Joe's my guy. <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep it rolling, just like. Come on in. Dana's gonna take over for Kyle. All right. This is the cool part. I have no idea who you are, <laughs> what your deal is. So who are you, where are you from, and like, what's your Boston story? Uh, my name is Kristen Long. I am from Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. It's the mushroom capital of the world. Mushrooms? Okay. Mushrooms, yeah. Cool. Wow. Like random fact, it's outside of Philly. What kind of <laughs> mushrooms? All, all mushrooms. All mushrooms. <laughs> okay. So we were chatting before, and she has run 30 marathons. 30-ish, oh yeah. And five Bostons. Okay. This will be my fifth. Yeah. This will be the fifth. So we were we were just like, okay, what's your boss's story? She goes, oh, I got stories. All right, hit us. What, yeah. Okay. Well, my first one was in 2006. That is back when it was they were giving out cotton long sleeve T-shirts as your finisher shirt. So it's oh come a long way. <laughs> and it was a noon start. So. I was saying we we need those cotton shirts back. They're vintage. Yeah, they're stylish. They're stylish. Yeah. The hype beast will be wearing them. Yeah, but the most recent one. Um, Fun-ish story as it was the 2018 when it was um, raining, snowing, sleeting. You're a survivor. Yes, okay. I am a survivor. <laughs> um, my husband had come up with me with my two kids, and they were one and a half and three and a half at the time, so it was miserable for everybody. Oh my gosh! And uh, got treated in the for hypothermia at the end, so he couldn't find me. For a while. You didn't have a phone on you or anything? No, my, my family had it. Okay. So, yeah. And uh, so he left my kids with a police officer to try to find me. He, he uh, works in law enforcement, so he had some connections and had a police officer watch my kids while he went into the medical tent. So. Wow. And they, they fed them sugar, so it was great. Oh. <laughs> did, did, has that day just, like, totally changed your perception of just, like, what is acceptable weather to, like, get out and run? Because, like... I feel like if you did that, you can get out for a run when it's like drizzling a little bit and yes. like the motivation might be low, but you're like, it's not as bad as that day in Boston. Yes, I, I do. I uh, compare everything to the 2018 Boston Marathon weather wise. Oh my gosh. Was that the last time you ran Boston or? No, I ran it in 2022 and 2023. Okay. So. And now having taken multiple stabs at the course, like, you know, it, does it get easier at any point or like each time out, like there's just... It could be a hot day, it could be a rainy day, a windy day, like it just, it all depends. Yeah, I think it gets easier in the fact that I'm trying to learn from my mistakes, although I still go out too fast because I feel really good in the first couple miles and then uh, 
Yeah. So you've seen a lot of different iterations of the Boston Marathon weekend. Now Newbury Street is rocking out of control. So what's your favorite part outside of the marathon of Boston Marathon weekend? Yeah, so last year I was confused by the expo because I was like, where is everything? And learned about Newberry Street and I didn't take as much advantage of it last year, so I did this year. But I do think walking up and down Newberry Street is more fun than the expo itself. Yeah, well, I guess like that's the toughest part about like just any of these major marathons. It's like there's just so much programming happening. It's like, oh, I want to go to this live panel. I want to go to this shakeout run. And like it's... You want to also stay off your feet before the race. Yeah. That was hard yesterday. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it, so I you're, was tired. You're a busy mom. You got a lot going on. You were telling me you're training for a half Ironman. You've done some wow. ultras. How do you do it all? Yeah. Like, what's the secret there? How do I, we keep ourselves moving like that? Well, one, running's just a great stress relief for me. Um, so I just try to make it a priority. I do get up at 3.45 in the morning because I love spending time with my family. So um, I try to get my run done before work. And then if I have to strength train or do something else, I do that after. And then um, my long runs, I still get up super early because I want to be back by the time the kids get up. Um, wow. So I can wow. spend time with them. So wait, what times? 3.45 regular wake-up call every Every night? Pretty much, unless it's my off day, yeah. Oh what time do you go to bed? Yeah. Like 8.30, 9 o'clock. Okay, that's, okay, that's good. I'm getting that's like good. six hours, six and a half hours sleep. So. When did you sort of make that adjustment to your daily life schedule? When I had kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I think it's the most badass thing ever. It's so badass. To, to wake up, get out there, do every day in the dark. Yes. I actually don't mind running in the dark. Um... I live by a lot of horse farms, so it's not super busy, and it's quiet, and get to see the horses. Mushrooms and horse farms. Yeah. I want to come visit. Yeah, <laughs> Sounds <honestly>. like Dillick. <laughs> well, we wish you the best of luck on Marathon Monday. Monday. What is going to be, like, what would make it a really special day for you? Are you going for, like, time, just, like, enjoying the day? Um, enjoying the day. I ran a marathon a month ago okay. um, to... Uh, and hit my PR, so I was very excited about that. Um, so this is all going to be about enjoying the day. Um, if I PR, um, that would be great, but it's not my main focus. It's just to enjoy the whole process and the crowd support, which is amazing going down. It's, I mean, it's like a 26-mile party, so. Oh, so cool. Do you have um, another race lined up after this? Like, are you the type of person who's just like, all right, I've got two marathons on the calendar for the year, and so you kind of just know where you're going to be yeah. in the spring and fall? I have a half Ironman June 30th wow. um, in State College, Pennsylvania, and then um, Chicago in October. So. Cool. Well, best of luck. We're yeah. going to be cheering you on the hallway. Every time I'm lazy and don't want to wake up at 6.30, I will be thinking of you. You literally <laughs> have no excuses. You make the time, and then if the weather's bad, you're just like, I run in worse weather before. So you're just like, it's every, every day, no excuses. Your kids I love should that. know how lucky they yeah. are. I hope they do. Definitely. They do. <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Sweet. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Come on in. We've got... Our next guest with us already. I love this. Just kind of. This is fun. We've never done anything like this we've before. We've never done anything like this before. Where we're just rolling through, random guests joining us. You never know who's going to come to the Sidious Cafe. You really don't. All right, but I know this guy. We're you now know joined by Mike Wardian. Yes. Mike, remind, I guess, tell the people where you're from. What number of Boston is this for you? I don't know. I think it's like 23. 23? Yeah. <laughs> what was your first one? What year? Uh, 1997. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that's a vintage shirt that I want. We were just talking about vintage gear, the cotton long sleeves, if oh, you have any wow. left. Oh, wow. It's kind of like the mock turtlenecks at Marine Corps. Like, those yeah. things are very uh, hard to come by. So, over the years, for you, has your relationship with the Boston Marathon changed? Just like, just because maybe at times you were going for PRs and performance, and then now... You know, as you come back, sometimes, like, you know, you're guiding people or, you know, there's just other races you have planned and this fits in in a weird spot. Like, how does Boston just kind of fit in to your life? Yeah, I mean, it's been amazing. So Boston, like, my Boston story is, like, this is the race that got me into running. Like, before this, I was just a lacrosse player. 
No and way. I went to my friend, like, uh, Vince Voison's house, and his mom, Vicky, had a Boston Marathon, like, uh, medal, like the unicorn. And I was like, oh, man, I want that. And then she was, like, had the, like, space blanket. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, this is the first, like, real person that I've met that had run a marathon. And so she gave me a packet, and I started training for the Boston Marathon. I didn't even know that you had to qualify. Like, I just was like, You're like, let uh, me in. I'm going to do the Boston Marathon for my first marathon. You're like, April 15th, I'm going to show up. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't work like that. Um, so I had to qualify. I ran Marine Corps, qualified for Boston on my first try, uh, and then decided to run sub three hours at Boston because I thought that's what real runners do. And, uh, and I did. I ran like 254. Wow. And that kind of got me started on running, and then I haven't looked back since. So that was 1997, and you're, like you said, like when I first started coming, it was mostly – uh, to just see how fast I could go, how quick I could be. Like, I, I finished, like, top 20 before, uh, was first American here before, got to go to Japan and race through the... Um, Abbott? Yeah, well, no, through the BAA. They have oh, a not, relationship oh, they with the Ome okay. uh, Marathon. And so uh, I've done that. I've run, you know, I started out just in the regular field, gone to the elite field, and, and now I've transitioned to, like, I still sometimes run in the Masters Elite field, but uh, I've also picked up guiding. So, like, I really love having the chance to help other people achieve their dreams and just, like, get a chance to be back and share that experience with people. I, I, the last time I think you and I did, like, an interview together was probably 2020 <laughs> when you were doing, like, the Backyard Ultra stuff. Oh, yeah. And it, that was an interesting point because so many people were finding running during the pandemic and like it was the only physical activity you could do when the gyms were closed and everything. And it's so simple, right? Because, you know, people always say like, you need a pair of shoes, you get out the door and you can get it done. <laughs> and, you know, kind of, I think the pandemic led to this big running boom. Yeah. For you, have you experienced that as well? Just sort of into seeing like, oh man, like the running community just feels just like more packed with people now and just like there's just a heightened energy around it because even like the ultra stuff that you do ultra is taking off yeah and these backyard challenges are getting more eyeballs it's just like running's having a moment yeah i love that man i think like i've always known it's been great and i've i like to see more people getting into it um i think it is a pretty simple sport it does feel like you don't need that much but as you know like the more you get into it the more stuff you accumulate like yeah I've got a basement full of stuff that I use on a daily basis that, yeah, I was like, I got into it because it was super cheap and I didn't really have any money. And I was like, all you needed was a pair of shoes. And now like there's all different kinds of stuff that I use. And um, I think it's great just to see so many people getting into it and so much innovation, man. Like just to see how far Hoka has come. Yeah. yeah. From when I first started with them, I think 12 or 13 years ago, so wow. like now, like the different amount of tools we have in the tool shed to be able to use in all different situations, it's incredible. I'd love to go back to the guiding because I think that's a really cool thing a lot of people don't know a lot about. So kind yeah. of what are some of the challenges that when you're doing guiding in a marathon, I've had one friend do it and you know the person she was guiding didn't speak English. So she's like, I had to learn oh. six words in Portuguese and yes. remember those while running really fast. So what kind of are the the tips and tricks that you've learned through your guiding experiences. Yeah, I mean, well, it's interesting. So I've guided uh, all over the world and all different athletes. So like uh, double amputees, uh, visually impaired athletes. Uh, the last year at Boston, I paced uh, my friend Dylan, who's an autistic athlete. And so it really depends. Like uh, some athletes, it's more about um, making sure like they're safe and as far as like when you're pacing like a double amputee athlete you got to make sure like you're getting all the water for them so they're not tripping over cups and nobody's kicking their um prosthetics or and um like a bodyguard they, what's that you're kind of like a bodyguard yeah. you're 100 percent a bodyguard yeah and so like just being like very physical with like protecting their space um with an autistic athlete like i was one of the biggest challenges was like uh, sensory. So like just making sure like it wasn't too crowded, uh, wasn't too loud. 
Um, also, like, not too many people touching. Um, so, like, uh, and then with uh, visually impaired athlete, it's a lot of, like, communication because they you're really describing the whole course to them. And so uh, you're like, all right, we have a climb. It's 400 meters. At the top of the climb, we're going to be going right. And so you're running, like, 231 pace while you're, like, narrating the entire time. So What's, like, like the extra effort of... Like, if well, you're running I got dropped for the first time in Tokyo. So, really? like, uh, I got dropped by my double amputee athlete with, like, two miles to go. So that's the first time in my life I've ever been dropped. Oh, uh, my gosh. Uh, so I was basically like, go for it, man. You're free. Uh, so, so yeah. So, like, that's never happened before. Um, but, like, I, I was surprised. Like, I just didn't have anything left. Like, I, but I was carrying, like a GoPro for him. I had like 25 gels. A I was last like running video back and forth running like away. doing tempo. I'd done like an extra mile. And so like, I was just like wiped out. So yeah, so like, there's a lot of things that go into it. But like, I think the great thing, especially about like the world marathon majors and like the amount of people that I've come across and, and know me throughout the running community. Like I have a lot of support from people that are just part of the race that aren't guiding, but actually end up helping me along the way. So they'll save space for the athletes. They'll um, clear the way when I'm trying to get water. They'll let me come in and out and just kind of like yell at them and push them out of the way. Like, I can't believe how many hands I put on people, like just trying to make sure they don't get too close to my athletes. So um, I think that's just a big part of it. And it's a big learning curve too. And each athlete's unique and different. Um, and a lot of times I don't get a chance to run with them because I have so many of my own things ahead. So I like meet them the night, day before and like have to figure out, you know, how to best serve them over the course of the race. Running such a self, uh, selfish sport sometimes <laughs> where you're just sort of like, it's all about like, you know, my training, how am I, you know, fueling myself and like putting in all the time for yourself. That like when you do get exposed to something like Achilles and guiding, yeah. like it just changes the whole thing, your whole perspective. It becomes selfless, I think, to you know help other people out. Yeah, I think that's one of the greatest things about it. Like there's so many great organizations, Achilles, a team with a vision, Culture City. Like there's there's a lot of different ways to be involved, and I I would highly recommend it for for people, especially like uh, ultra runners. If you're looking for a great way to get a good workout in, yeah. like it's awesome it's like supported run and you're getting to do good in the process so like yeah it's a win-win all the way around um and that's it's what just, you're doing tomorrow as well yeah so i'm guiding a uh, autistic athlete the same guy i guided last year dylan um so he ran a 16 minute personal best and Woo! broke three hours so he ran wow. 256 wow uh last year so like it's just cool it, and it's really hard for um some of the faster athletes to find people that really want to sacrifice their race for somebody else or dedicate that time to somebody else so like yeah for and there's all different uh levels so like if you're not a fast runner there's definitely somebody that could use a guide for the the other paces too so yeah all right mike well thanks for dropping by the city's cafe Thank to you. share your story what do you what else do you have lined up i know you've always got something else on the calendar yeah, so I'm doing my first Ironman in 25 years in wow. two weeks uh, at Ironman Texas in the Woodlands. Uh, and then uh, the big thing for this year is uh, running the entire Appalachian Trail. So, wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so that'll start uh, August 1st. And uh, I just turned 50 on April 12th, so Happy just birthday. a couple days ago. Wow. Um, so thank you very much. And so, like, I'm going to try for around 50 days. So it'll be a little off the FKT, but not that much. That's a gnarly, gnarly experience. <laughs> so I remember when uh, Jorg tried to do that and ran yeah. through my college campus. It's the only college on the AT. Oh, wow. And by Wait, the time, what college is that? Dartmouth. Yeah. Oh, no And way. so he ran through, and my buddy was like, I got to see him. Like, this is the coolest thing ever. He was so broken down at that point, he didn't speak. <laughs> he had no words left. So I hope when you get there, you've got some, like, well, words of encouragement. Well, Maine, so hopefully I won't be that oh, yeah. trashed. That is the smarter way to do That's it. That's smart way. <laughs> well, Mike, thanks so much for dropping by. Yeah, thanks very much for having yeah, thank me, Thank you. Guys. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, thank you. All right. Would you ever guide? Yeah, I made a verbal commitment. I am, I am oh, wow. going to guide someone in a – I think a 10K would be a good starting point. 
I think so. A marathon is a long time to, to guide somebody. Um, so so I'm, I, I yeah. made the verbal commitment to Francesco. I will guide for Achilles at some point and do a 10K. I so love it. There's plenty of New York Road Runner races. You got to practice. I feel like Mike's got some experience on you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see him in the park all the time. So, all right, we've got our next guest. Welcome. Hi. What's your name, where you're from, and what's your Boston story? Uh, my name is Karen Bertasso. I'm from upstate New York, and uh, my Boston story is uh, 2018. Oh, we got oh, another survivor. Yeah. Survivor oh, yeah. count number two. Yeah. Survivor <laughs> count is going up. I swam to Boston. <laughs> no, uh, I think like many people, you know, it, we're hoping for a great day and, uh, you know, get through the half feeling great. I didn't realize. The so one thing I learned from Boston 2018 was that I saw everyone wearing rubber gloves, and that was genius because my hands froze and I could no longer eat nutrition anymore. So, like after mile nine, no nutrition. I had friends like swapping out gloves on the course. Oh my gosh! Wow. Like I wish I knew. Anyway, so um, didn't get nutrition. Started to kind of feel really rough. Somehow made it to the finish line. Got. Swept into the med tent. Nobody could get a body temperature on me. They ripped off all my clothes. They put on the bear hugger. Wow. <laughs> um, you know, that was the one time I, like, actually filled out the information on the back of the bib, which you should always do. Smart. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. So, How long did it, it take you to get warm? I want, It felt forever, but probably, like, 35, 45 minutes. It's like those showers that when you're so cold that hurts your body. I, I don't remember any of them. Blacked out. Do you um, remember finishing and like crossing that finish line? Kind I of. Know. Oh my god. Wait, was that your first Boston? No. Okay. So okay. I've done Boston before, um, but yeah, so it just but like I was like kind of bummed everything like after the race, like but then you find out like how everyone did, and it was like oh I actually did really well, but. Um, it was just, like, really cool afterwards, too, because once I got out of the med tent, um, all the hotels downtown were just, like, letting everyone in and, like, to change. And, like, they were so nice. Um, the med tent or the med staff. Like, emergency made, situation. Yeah. yeah. They made me, like, a, a foil, like, outfit, like, because they had taken all the – my clothes were soaked. So they, like, gave me, like, a foil outfit that I walked out of the med tent <laughs> wearing. You were a mashed potato, yeah. a baked potato just walking around the streets of Boston. I look forward to, like, the Netflix documentary that they should do. It's just, like, all I survived, like, the 2018 Boston Marathon. My it's favorite like, moment of that These are war crazy. stories. These are war stories. My, I was watching from the the, cult, the warm a house on Newbury Street, yeah. and I remember watching it on TV, and Serena Burla, pro women's athlete at the time, two miles into the race, was wearing a crop top and buns. Oh, she no. She walked over to a trash can, empty trash can, pulls the trash bag out, makes a yeah. Wears it as a shirt for like three miles. Yeah. I don't know if she finished that race, but. There's this like, oh my, has it, I just asked, you know, uh, the previous guest that we had stopped by who told us that they ran 2018 Boston. Has it changed your perception on the weather when it comes to like, you see a forecast for a Saturday long run, it's going to be rainy. But yeah, you're it's a not warrior. as bad as 2018 Boston. Do you still get out for the run? Oh, I always do. And I, I think it kind of, like, kept following me because then, like, one of the next marathons I did was, like, super similar weather. Oh, <laughs> but my it, gosh. But because I was super prepared and I had the rubber gloves, like, I had no hypothermia, like, totally fine after. Like, I really learned from it. So I think I learned, you know. So the weather looks pretty good. No excuses. Yeah, for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. How, how, are you, how are we feeling about the race? What's the goal? So I'm spectating tomorrow. Okay, okay great. Nice. So That's drove, better. We drove out here this morning, and uh, we're really excited to be out on the course. Where do you watch? That's, uh, people ask that all the time. As someone who's run the race, where do you like to be cheered for? You can really only do... One, maybe two spots. So whenever I spectate, I do two spots. I go to around mile five because um, it's easy to kind of get in there and, like, park and everything. And then I drive into mile 23 and watch there. So Amazing. Well, we wish you the best of luck spectating tomorrow. <laughs> Enjoy the vibes. The weather's looking good. i racing. So. Yeah. Oh, well, Love congrats. It. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thank you us. so Thanks much. Thanks for having me. Amazing. All right. Do you want to switch out with yeah, Kyle? Yeah, let's do it. some people and then you bring us more guests. Absolutely. All right, Kyle. Get in here. Yeah. We are rolling. 
Yeah, that's oh, it's easy to remember. You got the sandwich. You got the Kyle sandwich. Oh, Kyle sandwich here. Kyle sandwich. All right, so you, your name's Kyle. Where are you from? What's your Boston story? Um, I'm from Seattle. Okay. My name is Kyle. Um, this is my first Boston. Congratulations. First Thank you. Where would you be Q? Mesa. Okay. Yeah, so Mesa 2022. Um, or 2023, sorry. Uh, and yeah, it's my fourth marathon out here. And I feel like I finally know what the fuck I'm... Sorry. You can curse. Okay, curse. What, uh, <laughs> what, what I'm doing. Um, I, don't, I don't come from a background in running. I was a soccer player growing up. Okay. I really came to it in like 2018. Uh, I ran my first marathon in Portland. And then from there, kind of started to figure it out a little bit. But really, it was like a mental health thing when I first started out. Is this one special for any particular reason, or is it just another marathon? I mean, it's special because of how many people are out here and, like, the, the legacy of it and just being able to, like, tell myself, like, look what you did. You know, look what you accomplished, hopefully, uh, tomorrow. But I think it's, it's more so, like, just seeing how far I've come from when I started, just, like, pushing myself out the door, not knowing what I was doing, not knowing why I was doing it, just knowing that I had to do something to get moving. Uh, and then finally... Arriving here feels like definitely um, a benchmark for myself to be like, damn, you just did this on your own. You know, you were able to like get out here and, and prove to yourself that you could do it. You said it's a big mental health thing, I guess. Like for you, how does that fit into like your day? And like, what do you feel before or after? It's like, is it just like the endorphin rush that you just like look forward to each time? Yeah, it's a, it's a big release. Um, I have a two year old kid at home, and I think. Another Kyle with another yeah. two-year-old? <laughs> My living, God. I'm, I'm, I'm Where do we find this guy? <laughs> yeah. We're living mirrored lives on yeah. opposite, opposite coasts. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you know, like, it, it's, it's a real whirlwind of a life living with a two-year-old, like, raising a two-year-old. Um, and you often only get short windows of time to yourself, you know, with a full-time job and everything, too. And so I just take advantage of that. And at this point, like, even if I don't feel like doing it, like, I feel so thankful that I get to get out and do it and every day that I get to run um, like this whole build has been just like so amazing because I just was able to push myself feel the gains and also just like spend that time with myself you know and it sounds weird like a lot of people run with run clubs and I do sometimes but 95% of my training was my, all by myself and it wasn't lonely it was like great <laughs> I really enjoyed it Let's do a little dad talk. I guess what's the biggest challenge? You've trained for, what, two marathons as yeah, a father? So, I mean, you can say you're going to run at a certain time each day. Right. But it is not a guarantee. Like, it's not, oh, every morning at 6.30 I go for a run. It's like, no, you might be going for a run at noon or 6 p.m. or you're 9 p.m. p.m. Yeah. You're just dressed the whole time. <laughs> yeah. 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 You just, well, I, actually, it, it is interesting because thinking about meals, like, I can dress in two minutes and get out the door, but like, did I just eat a meal? You know, like you yeah. gotta plan all your meals. I mean, I did probably 10 runs at 10 p.m. Yeah. You know, like in the middle of the night, just having to get out and do a speed workout on some road, you know, because that was the, like my daughter didn't go to bed till late. She was having a hard time or something and you just gotta like do it. And in the moment it, it is frustrating. And my wife will tell you that there's times where I got frustrated, but it's more so because I knew that I wanted to like follow through on my commitment to myself to get the training done that I wanted to get done. When I was competing, I had this idea that you shouldn't listen to music when you're running because it, it, I was training. Like, this is a very intent. I've got big goals, training. This is not jogging. And then I started having to run at night in the, the winter when it's like yeah. icy. And, and I was like, you know what? Would it help a lot? Uh, a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so that rule has since gone out the window. Yeah. So do you, are you a music or podcast guy? Yeah, I'm a wide variety of music. I do listen to a lot of podcasts too, but uh, I actually found myself listening to such a wide variety of music in this build that um, I was just going through like the songs I listen to the most. And there's like uh, this guy, Ross Gay, he's a poet and he does some poetry that has like Bon Iver music behind it. Uh, they like laid some tracks behind his poetry and that always just like calmed me down, uh, got me into the moment. Like there's a song about gratitude that got me thinking about like how grateful I was to be in that run. Um, and then like Big X the Plug, who's like a Texas rapper, <laughs> who right. like Texas trap. He got me through a lot of speed workouts. Uh, so yeah, a wide variety of stuff. I like Bon Iver. I swear, like he'd be a top five artist for me. I don't understand what the hell he's saying. <laughs> I don't think he understands what the he's hell just he's making saying. noises. Yeah, a lot of his <laughs> albums, like song names, are just like 
like a, a cat got on the keyboard <laughs> and just started pressing <laughs> buttons, you know, like or maybe he's got a two year old pressing buttons. He's too. making stuff up, but he's killing it. It's like when you go to a museum and like you look at a couple of paintings, you're like, that's art. Like, yeah. I, I can do that. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Yeah. I, like it. Yeah. I like the colors. I guess that's the point. But the combo of him and, and, a, and a poet is real nice. And it is very soothing. And I feel like, you know, it's so easy to get caught up in like your pacing and your, your nutrition and all this shit. And I think like, having that sort of calm down and be like, all right, I'm just here, like, enjoying this. It's really important. Will you listen to music during the race? No, I decided not to. I never understand why people do that. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Do, I had to do it in Houston. I to, oh, and, I, and, I like, I never did. I, like, I stopped doing it. I think once I started training in 2017, but then this time around, I was just like, I need to lock in. And I had, like, some random SoundCloud mixes that, like, you find. And I just was like, pick one, that, three of them that were each an hour long. And I was like, I'm not going to finish this, the third one. And I made it with like a minute to spare. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I have a friend who's a DJ, and I asked him to make me a play, like make me a mix. Yeah, that was my goal time length, and he spent a lot of time on it. And I'm not gonna listen to it during the race, <laughs> and so I want to say sorry to my other friend who's also named Kyle. Follow him uh, on for, SoundCloud. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Another Kyle. <laughs> Another Jesus Kyle. Christ. But I did listen to it uh, in the lead up, so I, I put it to good use. But um, I decided not to. I mean. So many people around, like so many fans. Like I just, I want to experience it. I don't, I, I can't imagine that I'll get a chance to do this again. Like maybe I will, but I'm taking, I'm taking the advantage of it. Like, like I'm not going get, to get back to Boston and I want to be able to really like remember it and experience it and feel like I, I gave it my all. What is going to make for a successful day for you tomorrow? Like you'll look back and you're like, all right, I'm happy with that. No poop stops. Okay. That would be like Is that a problem goal. in previous no, races? No, oh, okay. It hasn't been. Uh, <laughs> Very personal wood, question. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's you just poop like a the, lot. The nighttime version of this. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it hasn't been, but you know, it's always my on top of mind. Um, I just I feel like during training runs, sometimes you know you gotta you gotta stop. Uh, and my friends will will tell you that I've knocked on their door once or twice. You know to. To use their facilities, but uh, the elapsed that'd be a time good. on Strava. I always done. call Chris out because he'll be like, "Oh, I had a great two-hour run. I averaged eight-minute pace." And I'll go and be like, "That took you two and a half hours." <laughs> yeah. Where? So what was going on for thirty minutes? <laughs> the Black Mirror half hour. That's exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Goes out the window. Yeah. No, uh, that would be a, a first marker of success. I think, you know, I've got a goal time in mind, but I, if I finish feeling good, like my body feels good and my mind feels good. I'm not just like completely depleted and like mentally a wreck. I think that's, that's a goal, you know, to finish feeling like I gave it my all, but also didn't just destroy myself. So that would be, that'd be the hope. Awesome. Well, we best wish you the best of luck tomorrow. Do you have your bib number? Like shout it out for the people who want to track two, you. Five, seven, four, it's Kyle a good number. Sigo. Yeah. Yeah. I feel good about it. Feels like a nice number. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get to choose 254 it, loading. Are we happy with the 254 or no? What's that? What's your, what was the goal tomorrow? Uh, 240. 240. Uh, yeah. You yeah. don't yeah. want 250. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, though. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Well, thanks for popping by. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate cool. you both. Sweet. Sweet. All right, we'll bring on Pals next. And then Dana will take over. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Okay. All right, we got a couple of people coming by. I love this. Just this line up. They're great. lining up. It just we had just people who were watching on YouTube. You never know who's gonna come. But now we got Long Island. Long Island in the house. Oh, all right. Long Island. What's your name? Where are you from? On Long Island, and what's your Boston story? Um, my name is Brian Buttigieg. Um, tough name, but uh, <laughs> Pete Buttigieg. Thanks for getting it out into the world. <laughs> A couple years back, uh, transportation, pretty good in Boston. Ridden, rode the T up and all down. Um, really like it. Uh, my <laughs> Boston story, I guess, uh, like anybody else, you know, you retire from track and field, can't run too fast anymore, and uh, jump in a road race and, and give it a shot. Uh, my dad ran later in life, uh, and he qualified for Boston but hated training through the miserable wintertime. So I kind of, I guess I came out here, ran it for him, um, and uh, it's a celebration. I got two siblings out here in Boston. Uh, I'm the only one that fled to the West Coast, and it's just time to spend with family. And uh, it's a great city, great city. Are we are we time focused tomorrow, or is it? No, we're celebrating. We're having a good time. Uh, we'll be time focused tomorrow. Okay, yeah. really locked yeah. in. What's I, the goal? So I, I've run Boston once before. 
kind of injured beforehand, so I just went out and celebrated. If we're feeling good and we're racing smart, I'm shooting for two, sub 240. Hell yeah. And, um, should be a good day. How's okay. training been going? It's been going good. Uh, Seattle, tough city in the wintertime, a lot of rain, cold. But uh, Tuesday, we got a Tuesday crew, some tempo work, getting some speed turnover in, uh, really good. Um, and it's just a lot of skiing, a lot of cross training skiing. Like downhill skiing? Downhill skiing. Does that convert? Uh, the quads? The quads. Quads. Ready for the downhill? Builds the quads, yeah. Seriously does, yeah. Uh, maybe not cardio, but the quads get beat up, and it's worth yeah. it. Yeah. That's an important element. I mean, having done Boston before, what was the takeaway from that that you're bringing with you to this one? Say, uh, don't not going out too quick. Um, Those first 15 miles, too easy. First 15, cruising get caught up in the energy i think and um yeah the quads get beat up so hopefully that skiing skiing comes in handy what's the craziest previous marathon story you had if if or was, was oh, there anything man. in boston yeah, yeah. Give, give us a good one okay um yeah so i ran the eugene marathon last spring i wasn't gonna run i was driving my friends down to support and we're at the expo and they go uh, let's flip a coin on if you're racing or not. So flip a coin. I was correct. I'm like, I'm not racing. Flip it two more times. I was right again. I'm like, I'm not racing. And they were like, just go sign up. <laughs> I go sign up, um, hop in the race, just pacing a friend. And he's not feeling good early in the race. And I'm just like, let's just have fun. Like, take it in, enjoy it. Um, and ended up running pretty well. Um, but at mile 22, my friend's on the side of the course and he goes, holy hell, man, like, let me get a photo of this. Like, you're, you got some crazy stuff going on. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, look down. And I look down and I'm wearing a white Lost oh. Boys singlet. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Like, the whole front is just red, just caked up. You didn't even realize. No. Didn't realize till 22, somebody told me. And uh, apparently I was, like, bleeding onto the course and, like, people <laughs> were like, Stepping over it and stuff. No, uh, there was a trail. Yeah, there was Hansel a trail. and Gretel. Trail of blood, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, make sure you get some proper Band-Aids before the race. Um, there's a Portland brewery that gave out pasties before the race. Do not go there. They have bad adhesive, and they fall off within two miles. Uh, Expert advice. So make sure you tape up the nips, lube the, lube the joints with a little bit of nut butter, and, uh, yeah, just go out there and have fun. I think if you have fun with that mindset, you'll surprise yourself. How Love was that, that shower afterward? Ooh, yeah. Worst shower of my life. Not the only place I chafed, so it was kind of like <laughs> where to cover in the shower with the hot oh, water. You don't feel it till it's over, too. No. It's uh, in the moment. Yeah. Could have been bleeding out on the course, and I wouldn't have known. <laughs> so you know how they have, like, the little blue lines on the course where it's like, this is the shortest distance to get to the finish line. This is, like, the world record, like, if you stay on it. You were leaving on. You were leaving your own. Yeah, trail. I was leaving my own trail. People follow blood, blood on the trail for everybody. <laughs> you smell blood in the water. Blood in the water. Well, we hope that you don't chafe as bad tomorrow. I appreciate it. And uh, wishing you the best of luck in your race. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for dropping on. All right, and uh, I love track and field. Hey! Here at City Smag, we love track and field. We do. Oh, yeah, we love track and field. Marathon, marathon counts. Too. Yeah, throw it in there. All right. Thanks. All right. You want to come out or? Yeah. All right. Oh. All right. All right, we got another special guest. What's your name, where you're from? What's your Boston story? Oh boy, my name's Emily Royston. I'm originally from Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I'm currently in New York City. I don't really have a Boston story. I'm here for the Paul Revere Classic. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. That's the thing. Cool. I think like, people don't realize there's other, so many other races happening. There was like the 26 Point True, I think is what it was called, like the Pioneers race yesterday. You got well, the, 5K, the 5K, the, the mile. mile. Tell us about the Paul Revere Classic. What's the deal? I mean, this is my first time ever doing it. Um, it's basically we do the marathon course, um, but we relay it. So there's, I think, five people on my team. Um, we'll do segments, whatever distance, to add up to be the marathon, but you switch in and out of a van, kind of low-key, but it'll be fun, I think. When you have multiple people, like, the, in your head, do you just start to, like, do, all right, I think we hit the women's BQ if we all just go all out, or, like, right. we might OTQ if we, as a team. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if we've, 
if we OTQ, like that's, I'm gonna say I've OTQ. Everyone gets Everyone to Everyone then OTQ. run yeah. the trials. 28 trials, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. How did you get convinced or roped into this? Um, my boyfriend is Joe Hale and he obviously, you is know. Is he shooting it? Yeah, okay. yeah, he'll be our team photographer, but um, I'm kind of in a running rut right now and so I wanted to hop into a race and this is obviously very low stakes, so why not, you know? You ran at NC State. No. No. Butler. Butler, that's right. Close, why, right? why is there an NC State connection for some reason? I wish. Uh, right? You ran at Butler. It has a national title. Then yeah. afterwards, you go to, you move to New York. Right. As someone who's been in the NCAA and, like, competed at a high level, what do you make of the New York City running community where it's, like, there's crews and clubs everywhere? It's, like, it's very complicated. Other, it's a whole yeah. other animal. Social hierarchy. Yes. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. It's hard to know what to go to, like, who I want to, you know, run with on a day. But it's nice to know that I can go out there and there's going to be a group running Central Park or running East River. Like, just, you can go out there and find somebody everywhere, which is unique to New York, I think. But, yeah. The average New York runner has infinitely more pictures of themselves training oh, yeah. than most other runners from elsewhere in the world. There's some, you can go to, a, like I used to go to Brooklyn Track Club, like there would be five photographers on the track for a Tuesday night practice. Right. Here's the thing I always thought about is like, I was in it. So I was like in the New York City running seat deep. For Are you not? I mean, I'm a part of Central Park Track Club, but I've left the side that was more social focus, and now it's more performance. Your performance focus. Listen, I broke three hours at the Houston Marathon. Changed the mindset. Changed the, my mindset. Switches and flipped. But I always feel like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Sometimes you wake up on a Wednesday morning. All these crews had their practice on Tuesday. They got the Dropbox late that night, and then they post the photo. Everyone's posting practice photos on Wednesday. When we had Laura Green on yesterday, she's like, no one cares. I've thought about that because I used to be the guy who posted a photo on Wednesday talking about my workout, and now I've realized no one actually cared. You called me out. He called me out one time because he was like, Chris, no one cares how you do at the four-miler in Prospect Park. Right. And I was like, wow, you really crapped on, like, three years of, like, my social life in right. New York City. Well, but that is, like, that's the scene, I think. Again, we're doing a What's Your Boston Story, so we care, obviously. We care. But I, is that like the elevate, like when you are no longer running in college, it's this idea of like, well, now you're doing it for yourself more so than to help the team. And that's a tough transition. Could you imagine transition. like a color, you had five photographers at every single practice and getting a drop box after every practice and then posting the next day like, hey, you know, didn't quite have it out there for my one by or my five by one K. And it's like, no one cares. <laughs> I mean, that's why Strava exists. Though, that's why right? Strava exists. I mean, yeah, after honestly. college, that's where you post it. Like, you can post your pictures on there. You can post whatever. But that's like my platform now, and I can get gra like people will give me kudos, and it's like you know I don't need to post a picture because somebody saw the workout on Strava. Like, yeah, yeah. That's my that's my thing now. So after the Paul Rear Classic, is the goal to come back and run the full course at some point? Eventually, yeah. 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 Um, it depends on schooling and stuff, but I would love to. Obviously, after racing New York, I think Boston's the next thing. Amazing. Yeah. Well, good luck at the Paul Revere Classic. Thank That's you. tonight, right? Yeah. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Yeah. I wonder how long this Paul Revere Classic goes for. Until the BAA <laughs> Until it starts down. getting shut down. Right, yeah. Well, we'll see. it's happening today. <laughs> yeah. If someone from the BAA is watching this, you Don't didn't do hear anything. anything. <laughs> Don't do it. Let them well, do thanks it. Thanks so much for dropping by, Emily. Of course. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Awesome. All right, let's bring on our next guest. You want to switch out with Dana? Dana. Dana. Hey, good to see you. We're live on YouTube right now. Love it. And we're going to flip it into a podcast afterwards. Sounds great. Introduce yourself. What's your name, where you're from, and what's your Boston story? Great. Uh, my name, should I be talking to y'all or? You can talk to, talking to them. Talking to them. I love it, love it, love it. Okay. Uh, my name is Cal Calamia, and I'm from San Francisco, California. It's my second Boston. Okay. Super stoked to be here. Um, the first time I was slated to be here, it was 2021, okay. and I tore my ACL. So oh. <laughs> that was a flop. And then I was here last year. It was the first year there was a non-binary division. So participated in that. I'm trans, so that's been really dope. And then, yeah, back for round two this year. Non-binary division growing each year. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about it, I guess, because, like, you know, 
you're from San Francisco. What's the scene like out there? And then just yeah. like for these major marathons to like adopt that over the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah, it's been amazing. I was like a, a pretty big part of getting Boston to add the division. I was working with the Boston Athletic Association, which was really dope. Um, and last year we had 27 runners. Okay. Uh, this year we got 54. Hey. And it's going to be probably the most competitive non-binary field ever to date in any race. So that's really exciting. Um, San Francisco, I run non-binary run club out there. So we have a ton of trans and non-binary runners that get together and do stuff. I'm the only one who's here this weekend, or I guess for tomorrow's race. But um, yeah, it's a really, it's an awesome group of people. So it's cool to see the uh, adaptation of this category, just so more folks can kind of come out and feel like they're welcome in the running world. So I'm excited to be a part of that history. Yeah, Cal, you said that you just ran the LA Marathon about a month ago. Yes. So we're, we're not really coming on fresh legs right, here. Right, right. What are your personal <laughs> expectations? And, and, and why, are you, why, why are you doing that? <laughs> I did this. I did this. Okay, I did the Chicago to um, New York City last year, which is also like time. a four four week turnaround, yeah, right? Really? That's a good, yeah. It's, oh, wow. it's similar. Maybe five. It's, yeah, it's very similar. But I surprised myself and had a really good race in New York City. So I'm like, I'm not super fresh, but I'm, I'm going to go in and see how the legs feel and like just kind of go for it and listen to my body. If it, The worst thing that can happen is I'm running the Boston Marathon and like having a good time. So um, yeah, just going to see what happens out there. So West Coast versus East Coast. Vibe check. Vibe check. <laughs> What's going You're putting on? Me, I don't want to put anyone on blast. No, for the races, yeah. for the marathons. Okay, okay, marathons only. Okay, okay. That does change the game. In general, obviously, like, I prefer the West Coast. That's where I live. But I, the marathons out here are, are amazing. I mean, New York City energy is incredible. Boston energy is unmatched. Like, the races out here are really, really good. So um, it's fun to spend time over here in that context and just, like, soak in all the energy of people that are happy to be here and, and be a part of this weekend and tomorrow's race. So for the non-binary field, when there's only, like, 50-plus runners right. competing, right. That could feel like pretty like personal too, like where you can. It's not totally. like you know an elite field or where I guess like there's twenty or fifty plus, whatever right. it might be like for the men's and women's right. field races. Right. But like when it's only fifty, like you right. can get to know some of these people like on a personal level. Absolutely. Has that been just like another element of just sort of like oh like you know your story, but getting to know some of the other people in the field as well, just like totally. you know what this means to them just to be included yeah. in something that they don't typically see in other yes. races yeah 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 that's a, such a good point i mean it is a community we kind of know each other and, and we kind of know who we're up against a little bit but at the same time people are changing all the time so then you get you know new folks where you're like oh i've never heard of this person and they just you know came out of the woodwork and are really fast so it's like cool to like build those connections and be in community with each other and it gives it all more meaning you know because i did feel like when i was first doing it it was like i was kind of like on my own i was like i need people to like do this with you know so it's good that it's growing even if it makes it more competitive harder to win right um but in a good way you know that's it's great so how do you make sure that you like protect your energy and don't overcommit? You're very social. Totally. You're really yeah. leading, yeah. Uh, you know, the, the non-binary division. You're an activist all over. Yeah. Like, how do you like protect your peace during these race weekends? And yeah. also, like, you're a very elite athlete. Like, yeah. Are you staying off your feet? Yeah, <laughs> these are the good questions. It is a hard, it is a really hard balance um, because I feel like I am managing Popular. sort of like, <laughs> sort of like the, um, yeah, the piece around like building community and also like trying to perform my best. And it, it is, I haven't quite struck the balance right. I'm running the Hoka Shakeout here in 30 minutes and I got like a whole bunch of queer community members that are gonna come in and allies that are gonna do that. So there wasn't a pride shakeout unless I make the pride shake out. So now there is one, which is dope. But then, yeah, I got a race tomorrow. So it's, it's juggling a lot for sure. But again, it's like, it can be challenging, but it's, it's an honor to be able to like, kind of be a part of this story. And I just try to do things that make me happy. And like, other people make me happy and spending time with people makes me happy. So after all this happens today, I will go rest and lie down a little bit, have an early dinner and get sleep and be up early and ready to tackle tomorrow. How, uh, to Dana's point about just like protecting your yes, peace, yeah. how challenging is that just like online? Because like obviously oh like God. you know, oh when uh, Chris uh, is we, like, we don't want this to be we, a five we, minute segment. We, we put we put up an Instagram post celebrating you know a Nikki Hiltz victory yes. during a race, yep. 
and we have to monitor the comment section. Totally, totally. Because, like, sometimes, you know, that when an athlete is tagged, they get the notification as yeah. well to, like, every single comment that, yeah. like, pops up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like you don't want to be responsible for, like, the mental toll that takes on that athlete. Yeah. And I feel like anything is heightened when it's just sort of tackling just sort of the trans non-binary community when, right. like, yeah, there's these old school people out there who just yeah. aren't welcoming or accepting to the whole totally. idea. And for you to be at the forefront of it, like, is that, how hard is that to sometimes like tune out the noise? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for asking this question and like being so present with this conversation and like tapping into that. Cause it is really hard and um, I like to stay pretty optimistic, but it is, it is challenging. And I think the good news is that people that are angry really mostly are online, you know? And the, the good news about online is you can just put your phone away, you know? And I feel like that's been huge for me is being like, all right, I'm gonna make this post. You know, it's hard to not read the comments when they come in, but also like, it is, a, it is an active choice that I can make to like kind of like not engage with that. I really don't engage with negative comments. Um, and it's, it's great like to hear that, you know, when you put up this post about Nikki, that you're also like keeping an eye on, even though it's kind of maybe a strain for you and your team, that you're keeping an eye on those comments and like monitoring things and making sure that Nikki's protected, right? Like that's really dope to see when teams are kind of like, you know, have trans and non-binary athletes backs in that way. It makes us feel like we, we have a little layer of protection to kind of be ourselves because I think at the end of the day, that visibility and representation, having the post up about Nikki is so important. We can't like not post that, right? Like we have to post that and we have to talk about what's happening. Um, and yeah, when we have like the support of other teams that are willing to step in and like do some of that care, it makes a really big difference in like, um, you know, just like keeping the future um, optimistic for young people or, or other, you know, people who are realizing they're trans and they're like, well, what am I gonna do, right? And so having that representation is huge um, and having, yeah, having support of other folks is also really awesome, so thank you. Like we've got, I already see it happening. Someone's already, you know, creating the Let's Run Sidious Mag oh, as well oh, thread time. and all that yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. all right. right now. Listen, like. Yeah. We love the restrict button. It's just sort of like, <laughs> it's being just. A, it's being human. A, a human being, right? Totally. Like, and I think like to your point, like, yeah, people are so brash online. Yeah. You come to these marathon weekends, no one's actually in right. your face right. and like yelling at you exactly. or anything like that. And so it, there is just sort of like that big separation. And so. It is cool to see that, you know, you don't let it get to you, yeah. even though they're trying as hard right. as possible to right. get to you in the comments right. section. Yeah. yeah, 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 you know, it's all going to be okay. Yeah, it's all going to be okay. Cal, we are seeing everyone line up. You're the person of honor for your run, so we'll let you get back to socializing <laughs> over there. And so good to see you. We miss you in San Francisco. But. I miss you guys, too. <laughs> you probably miss the one. weather, for sure. <laughs> yeah. That, too. Yeah, it was a long winter. Well, thanks so much for stopping by. Yeah, of course, appreciate you. Yeah, thanks so much. All right, that was great. Well, I know this is fun. Yeah. All right, we got two new guests. Oh, Eric, come on by. Let's, let's get Jenkins right. on the yeah. mic here for a sec. Oh, baby, I love it. This is the best part. We got these suits on. These are so fun. Okay, get in there. All right, I got my another co-host. We're just swapping them out the whole time. Eric Jenkins, thanks for dropping by. Pleasure to be here. I'm stoked. So, Eric. I saw from a distance you were talking to our next guest. Yeah. No, they, I got approached. They asked. Um, what's happening what's, here? What's happening here? Could they come on to their story? I said, absolutely. So welcome. What are your names? Where are you from? And I see the Boston Marathon jackets. You guys are racing tomorrow? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, we're racing together tomorrow. Okay. Yes. And we're from Canada. And uh, my name is Mindy Zhao. And uh, it's my fourth mar uh, Boston Marathon, and uh, specifically run together with my dear husband. Oh yeah. my gosh! <laughs> yeah, my name is Bo. Yeah, we came from Winnipeg, uh, Canada. Yeah, this is my first time, uh, second time to run Boston Marathon. Yeah. When did you two start running together? About probably six years ago. Yeah, okay. we started running. Yeah. And she finished the first full marathon, and she qualified for Boston the first time. And then uh, we came in uh, 2020, uh, 2018. Yeah, the, she ran the 2018. No, Boston you marathon. guys are survivors of that <laughs> day. She, she, she was survived. <laughs> How yeah, was 2018 that? 2018 was a very memorable marathon for me because it's my first Boston marathon. 
And I imagined I watched the video and I started the course and everything. But the weather that day was really bad. And my mind was kind of, you know, tell me maybe should I run or should I, I just feel like not very confident. But in the end, I told myself, I've trained so hard for this, and I came from a long way, so I can do this. Yes, time-wise, it's not good, but I did survive. I learned a lot, though, from that epic marathon here. Yeah. Do you guys, do you guys have a certain time in mind, a goal that you're uh, looking to run? Yeah, last year was good. We, uh, we, uh, we, we, I ran pretty uh, good. Last year, I finished at 313. Uh, but this year I have some little injury um, and my wife actually uh, we have raced uh, for uh, many marathons but we never run together so tomorrow we are going to run the whole race together we will finish uh, uh, hand in hand. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. It's so beautiful. I actually, I feel bad when my husband wants to run with me because he's way faster than me. His fastest time is 307. 307? Yeah, I know. Wow. But uh, he, he did it last year. But we run so many. Last year we ran five marathons. But uh, when he wants to do it together with me, I feel happy. But because we can finish hand in hand, but at the same time, and he can be my pacer as well. At the same time, I feel bad because he didn't really race it. <laughs> yeah, but because of the injury, I don't know. I push him to do his, his best and, you know, run your own race. Yeah, we'll but, try yeah. to finish probably <laughs> under 3.30 at least. Yeah. Because then does that get you another BQ for the next year? Or uh, do you guys want to keep doing this every year? Uh, probably, yeah, yeah. We are coming next year for sure because uh, our daughter uh, finished uh, the <laughs> first marathon last uh, fall. And she qualified for Boston as well. So the whole so, family is yeah, going to so run next year. So sure next year will be wow. here. Yeah, That's exciting. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. My daughter runs Toronto Marathon, and uh, she runs 321. But she's qualified. She's a dermatologist, so she'll come together with us and her fiance also. So we're very excited about 2025. Yeah, yeah for sure uh, we'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you guys been together? Tell us the secret. You guys, you guys are so happy right now, and like running has brought has come into the picture what's your love story yeah we have been married for uh, yeah this was uh, 30 years <laughs> and congratulations yeah. <laughs> actually yeah. it's not today 14 it's today oh, your anniversary check the, check yeah. the time yeah, it's today congratulations yes. yes. oh. <laughs> your anniversary. Wow. Wow. i didn't feel it's such a long time what a it's day been, yeah many we years. were yes. we were our university <laughs> classmate so it's so many years when he told me 30 years i just feel like three years or one year so fast Especially with running marathon, we, we just came back from Tokyo, actually, in March. And my husband didn't run, but I run, and he always be my, like, uh, uh, navigate the road and where do we live. And he's like a manager to manage everything. And I just need to focus and run. Yeah, I'm very blessed in that way. <laughs> wow. So as, are you guys like checking all of the majors like off the boxes or like you, you, you did Tokyo, you did, you've done Boston? Yeah, actually she finished the four majors already <laughs> and this uh, I finished two of them, uh, yeah. New York and Boston. And we are going to run uh, Chicago and Berlin in the fall. So she will be number five, I will be number four. You got to catch up. Yes. Uh, actually. Because <laughs> then you guys got to do the six star together. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. We just have London left, yeah. To be honest, at our age, uh, maybe we're even older than your parents. <laughs> How old are you guys? Uh, you don't mind me asking. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're 56. Yeah, what do you think? What do you, we were born 1968. 1968. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, to start with, when we started running, fitness is the goal. Yeah. And I never thought like, oh, what is uh, this world major? We knew nothing. So when I first finished my marathon in Manitoba Marathon on Father's Day, my uh, colleague told me, oh, you qualified uh, for Boston. Where, what is Boston? I said, I don't know. I know nothing, honestly. So, but over the running journey for so many for the past almost uh, uh, ten, yeah, six yeah, years yeah. yes i learned about this and i keep motivating us to do better to pb to go to this one and to get the sixth major and you know to train your personality to be more persistent and uh, you know determined and to reach your goal i'm a school teacher i'm a high school teacher so i always share this with my students yes and i really find 
running is not just a running; it's it's a life learning and life journey. It's life itself is like that, and I personally benefit a lot. It can have a stress relief, and especially when you come to、uh, from far away to this world, major the you know the BQ, the Boston Marathon, you feel like oh you get to know so many amazing runners from all parts of the world, and you know you just keep doing better to be the better version of yourself. And is I we just feel like I feel very grateful, honestly. Boston、yeah. told me.、Uh, t- Uh, Boston, uh, no, marath- running marathon has taught me you never know your limit until you try it, right? Because、uh, when I started running, I never thought I can run Boston even, right? <laughs> Because at、like, that time, I, the first time I like, I, I finished、uh, like way over like four hours, right? So and then、um, uh, as I train more, so I get closer and closer. Uh, and I I see okay <laughs> if I try harder I can I can qualify because I know I I, I came here、uh, with her in 2018 at that time I I never thought I I would be someday I will run、uh, the Boston Marathon <laughs> yeah but、uh, like after uh, uh, two years of training so now I'm I'm here <laughs> you guys are so inspiring yeah great、and、story. And I'm, and it, you know, after what you guys just said, I'm ready to like, you know, lace up my shoes and get out for a run. You guys, you guys motivated me.、Um, yeah, Are you I, running tomorrow? <laughs> I'm not running tomorrow. I'll be here watching the races and talking about them. And then,、uh, but I've done Boston before. I need to come back at some point.、Um, and yeah, no, I mean, but you guys enjoy tomorrow. Celebrate the、yeah. day. happy anniversary. Happy yes, anniversary. Enjoy the weekend. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for stopping by. Boston is the best marathon, and not not only because it's one of the world famous, of one of the world majors. The main reason I love Boston because of the people, because of the city, and because of the crowds, especially the last 1,000 meter on the Boston Street. And I feel, you know, you feel tired last year, but when I hear the hear. The cheering! I forgot about anything, and I know I'm come from Canada, and I represent Canada. So I really, you know, speed up. You know, I don't know how did I do that, but I forgot all the exhaustion, exhaustion, and the tiredness. But so every step is the magic, and I reached the finishing line. PB'd last year. Yeah. You you know how to cut a promo. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Have, Thank yeah. you. Great story. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you for、so、coming、much. on. Thank you for having us. Have、yes. fun tomorrow. We'll yeah, yeah. see you okay, tomorrow. <laughs> okay. We'll come、fun. again. See you tomorrow. Yes, I'll come here next, next year. We'll see you next year. Stop by again. Thank you. We want to hear about how this year's race goes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. We're keeping the good times that rolling. Great. Did that great. Yeah, fire you up. Do, do you、I、have a desire to run a marathon after that? All right. Come on. I'd run a marathon. Yeah. After that. Yeah. Right here. All right. What's your name? Where are you from? What's your Boston story? My name is Vinny Caraselli. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania.、Uh, currently, just moved there about eight months ago. Okay.、Um, and I don't know, my Boston story, I guess, is to do do my best. This is it your first one? Second. Second. Okay. Second Boston.、Um, but to do my best at like. One of the most historic races ever. How'd the、yeah. first one go?、Uh, first one went pretty well.、Yeah. Um, it was my second ever marathon, so a bit of like a shock in terms of size. My first marathon was maybe like 200 people, and then last year was 30,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> so a little bit overwhelming, but I mean the the rumors are true. It was excitement all 26.2 miles. I never felt alone. Like、in my head at all, it was it was wonderful. How'd you fall into running marathons? Um, I guess like my running story started when I was kicked off the. I didn't make the soccer team in high school.、Um, I was like a soccer and baseball player. Didn't make the soccer team. Started doing like couch to 5K, and then got into long distance running.、Um, after college, COVID like sort of ended. Oh man! Like college running, and so I just. Up the mileage, started running marathons, and have loved it ever since. What are you going for tomorrow? What's the like? What's the goal? I'm hoping 229 or faster. Oh、yeah. my god! How have、yeah. the workouts been? Workouts, workouts have been going really well.
Um, you're out of the club? Yeah, I, I have a great coach and like a great support squad uh, back shout in Pittsburgh. Shout him out on the pod. Yeah, Pittsburgh Track Club. All right. Shout out to Pittsburgh Track Club. Uh, just had a couple runners at the Olympic trials in February. Um, building a, a great competitive team uh, in the Pittsburgh area, so. I love that. Um, so I guess, do you try and hang on to those OTQers and workouts? Like, where do you match up with? Because it's like, all right, like 229, is it? It's 10 minutes from like the 219 crowd and all that stuff. But, you know, how does it all work? Like, I, is it, do you have people who are OTQers and then goes all the way back to like four hour marathoners or like how tight is the squad? Yeah, I mean, the, cl the club accepts everyone, which is great. Um, there's no, like, elitist attitude at all. Um, and so, obviously, like, the Olympic trials qualified guys are miles ahead in terms of, like, speed, endurance, things like that. But they're super welcoming, like, to help pace workouts. Um, Colin Martin's a, a, a guy who, like, has helped me with workouts and, and loves to do so. Like, great guy, great personality, good heart. Um, I mean, and it's also fun to like try and hang on to those guys, have like a bit of an ego check and just like realize you got some work to do. But I mean, it's, it's all fun and games and good attitude. What, what was your favorite thing about running Boston last year? Honestly, my favorite thing was that final turn down the home stretch. Um, during those like last few parts of the marathon, you definitely get into like sandbag mentality and you're like oh man i could run this and still do it this time and then you make that final turn and it's exhilarating i mean you are like your heart is so full and everyone is 10 15 rows deep cheering for a bunch of strangers and it's the most overjoyed like i've felt in a while and it carried me that last 800 meters down the road just pumping my hands up, all the energy I have left, and then you get like the post-marathon tears, just like, you're so tired, you're so excited, and everything just like comes out, and it, it's amazing. It's the, That's the beauty of just kind of like the sport where it's like, yeah, I mean, you have your 204, 203 marathoners up at the front of the race, but like these people stay out, and they're celebrating you just as much as like they were for those winners. And it's like, this is your own like sort of superhero moment. Exactly. I mean, and the, the weather last year wasn't perfect either. Some like rain, especially like in the later waves and the crowd support stayed the whole time. Like uh, the fans at the Boston Marathon are there for the people who are running two hours and the people who are running six hours and everyone gets to enjoy that. Like awesome cheering the whole time. Awesome. Well, we're wishing you the best of luck. Yeah, in have your fun race out there tomorrow. tomorrow. Have fun and enjoy that final turn again. Of course. Yeah. Best. Thank you, guys. Nice yeah. meeting you. Yeah. Good to meet you. <laughs> All right. Keeping the good times rolling. All right. More guests. Step on up. This is nonstop. <laughs> we're over an hour into our show, and I just and I just love this. Hey. All right, introduce yourself to the Sidious Mag podcast listeners, where you're from, and uh, what brings you to Boston. Hi, uh, my name is Yu Wu. Um, I, I grew up in China. I moved to the States for grad school, lived in the Bay Area for 12, 13 years. And the past five years, I've been just moving to different cities, places. I actually live in Boston right now, and, and I'm running on Monday. Okay. Have you run the marathon before? Is this your first I Boston? I am not. It's my first Boston. Oh, awesome. For you, I guess we, I got the chance to meet you in Orlando because you stopped by the Sidious Cafe and shout out your Instagram. Like, tell the people Thank what you. they can find on Instagram because it was really cool. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I, um, I, so right now I just travel to, to, to different cities. I lived there for three to four months. I really want to use running as a way to explore new cities and uh, at the end of my stay, I make guides for runners because I really want to share this passion of running and exploring your city with running. Um, I try to like show the best routes, the best run, all the run clubs that I get to know in the city, and of course uh, all the best coffee shops because I love coffee. Um, on Instagram, my handle is you the runner. Why you the runner? Yeah. What's your favorite uh, run in Boston? What, what do you love doing around so here? So I did this run, actually this Monday, I did the whole 
emerald necklace. It's a chain of parks connected by like bikeways and walkways. It's just a really beautiful route. It's about 20 miles. Wow. It's, yeah, it's a loop and um, it goes through so many parks and different neighborhoods of the city. And it's a little bit more change of scenery than the Charles River front. So I really like that. And I feel like it's more of a hidden gem because most people would go to the river. But this one is more in the city and, and there are more coffee shops that you can stop by, you know, on your route. Yeah. What's the best coffee shop so far in Boston from all your research? In Boston, I live close to Grace Note Coffee. I've heard only good things about them. The thing I like about them is you can tell everybody there is a regular. And I really like that about the coffee shop is that they are there to serve the neighborhood and they love their customers. They want to be your friends. Yeah. How do you feel? We had this guy, I ran into him outside and I was like, all right, like we're serving up coffee at the CDS Cafe, but in the area, like what is the best place to go? And then we got into this whole discussion. It was like, well, you know, Boston's pretty famous for Tate. Like I see everyone posting Tate. That, that's the place they go to. Yeah. What's your honest thoughts on Tate? You know, I, I moved to Boston thinking that Tate is a chain and I'm just not going to like it. But I went, I, I still went. I actually like the pastry. I think the coffee is decent too. It definitely depends on... For the coffee, I think it depends on which barista is, is making and serving. So it's ah. a bit different. The pastries are all from, you know, it's wholesale. So from the bakery, so I think it's more consistent. Um, I do have to say, when they make coffee, it's not like the barista will serve you. They basically have a station that makes coffee and you just picked up the coffee there. It's not as personal at some coffee shops, which I enjoy that part the most, is making friends, you know, with the baristas. Because whenever I leave a city, all my friends are either runners or coffee shop baristas or regulars. What's your go-to pastry? For Monday, um, I'm trying, so I'm really just trying to have fun. And my goal, my number one goal is to take a selfie with anyone that I recognize, you know, my friends or just, People, you know, cheering for me on the street, but I still want to go a, a sub three. So that's just, uh, yeah, that's my goal. Nice. Uh, so, is how much coffee do you consume in a day? Much, it sounds like uh, a lot. My record is eight. Eight. Yeah. Too much I, I literally. You gotta, to, you, I, so, you gotta, no, I'm not your doctor, yeah. <laughs> but like, that's a lot of milligrams of caffeine. I, I know, well, so the good thing is- How's if, your anxiety? If the coffee is not good, yeah. I may not drink the whole cup. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, like I'm there to just get the experience. You'll take one yes. sip, just leave it on the table, walk out the door. I'm too shy to do that. Yeah. Occasionally I would just have a full, like full mouthful of coffee and then went to the restroom and just like, Oh, you're pretty. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, that, that's just me. I, I'm too shy to put a cup full of coffee, just leave it on the table and say like. Barista just good. sees you sprinting to the bathroom <laughs> after one sip. They're like, huh, he's either going to yeah. shit his pants or he really didn't like that. Maybe both. Because <laughs> yeah. I have so much coffee, right? Yeah, no, you, you're really, yeah. I got to recommend cutting it down a little. With, with this venture, I guess, like a, a, uh -huh. a you have to have a cutoff time, right? Like yes. Like so, at five p.m. You're not having another coffee. Oh, coffee! No, I I only I only go out in the morning. Like, I'm a morning person. Okay. I I go out in the morning. I love breakfast. I have coffee. Maybe like two or three is when you know, like I'll just go home and stay stay home. Like I cook all my meals. I just love the morning of a city, especially when it's so quiet outside. Sometimes I run. You know, like if I run in the middle of the street. Sunday morning, nobody was out. I feel like I'm the king of the city. I, I like just, that, yeah, yeah. Th that is a good feeling. I, like I really that. love that. Just like do some workouts on the street. I just love it. Yeah. So you've lived in Boston. I see the Mill City hat, Minneapolis. Go Mill City. Where else? And it's like now on your Instagram, if people check it out, like you've got guides to all these yes, cities. Yes. Okay? So I, uh, I quit my job, my tech job in, in the Bay Area. So I started from... Uh, San Francisco on, on the West Coast, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, LA, Denver, Austin, Texas, wow. Twin Cities, Chicago, Atlanta, and I just moved to Boston last month. Yeah. You know what's next? Um, I'm moving to DC in June, and after wow. DC, maybe there is an 
a new adventure that I'm planning. Ooh. So stay tuned. You, wait, did you do New York or no? I haven't. I always feel like New York will be the final stop because it's such a big city. It's so it's packed with like just things and people and just. That's where you double your PR of coffee. Yeah, you're, you're so gonna 16 in one day. I probably will just end this grand tour in New York and you know spend maybe like a year there to explore the city. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Well, you, I appreciate you coming by to share a bit, bit about yourself, your Boston, your running journey. Wishing you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's have fun tomorrow. Pleasure. Thanks for Thank coming you so by. much. Can I get Kyle on? Yeah, sure. Sweet. We are now 90 minutes into this, and I'm having a blast just meeting random people. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we've got nonstop people dropping by, so it's nice and warm for you. Uh, what's your name? Where are you from? And what's your Boston story? So, my name is Sabrina. I'm from Montreal, Canada. Oh, I love it. We had, I think, two or three Canadians already popping by. From from uh, Montreal as well? Not from Montreal. I think Winnipeg was... Because, okay, it's not the same thing because uh, je parle français as yeah. well, you know? <laughs> I need to brush up on my France. I'm going to... Olympics in, in Paris, so like okay. I need to, I need to learn some French. Yeah, okay, so we need to practice later, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so what bring, what brings you to Boston? How many Bostons is this for you? It's my very very first Boston. Congratulations! Very fun. And, uh, you can see I'm excited. I, I keep on smiling. Yeah. I'm excited, but it's it's buzzing everywhere. So it's uh, yeah, it's exciting. I um, it's actually my third marathon ever. Wow. Uh, my third major as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I only did majors. Uh, the Which other two have you done? My first one was, uh, were, was New York City in 2021. Then the vibes we had in New York City, I, I have to be honest, I have never experienced such a thing before. It's amazing. Because I was actually doing more of trail running before. Long, I like long distances because you can, I don't know, it's different. You breathe it's, it's another state of mind. It's, so I was doing like 50, I did 100K once. In the forest, it's not the same. Wow. I was more into, yeah, trail than road. But I was lucky enough to have a B for New York City in 2021, and then that's it. Wow. From New York, we got Chicago. So I did Chicago, and I qualified in Chicago. I surprised myself, honestly. And then I was like, okay, next one's gonna be Boston. So wow. now you have to do them all. Exactly. So we are planning to do like eventually Tokyo next year. And uh, why not Berlin? Yeah. And because, I don't know, deep inside myself, since Boston is already done, I'm hoping that the last one will be in London. There because I know London, it's a celebration as well. <laughs> did you, when you started running, yeah. did you ever think that this was going to be it? Like you would be going and visit all these major cities or was it just more for like your health and wellness and mental health yeah when I begin to run uh, running uh, the way I run today has been in my life since maybe five the five past years I used to be a basketball player. okay uh, before basketball I used to be a handball player but I know handball is not very popular here because when I arrived in Montreal I was searching a team of handball like you know and people were like what? I don't know like, anything about handball. Exactly. I was like, oh, you do. I mean, people are like, hand, hand what? Handball? But I mean, in Europe, and uh, even yeah. the, the feminine, uh, you know, I, I'm from France, that's why. I yeah. mean, I was born in France. So, in handball, you actually run a lot. Yeah, convert. Hand, exactly. Yeah, I kind of. <laughs> after handball, I actually played basketball for like 14 years until I end the university. I was a co-referee, basketball was my thing, and uh, I actually traveled with my ball, you know, like, like in my bag, I put my ball, yeah. Never and leave I the still house. have my whistle, you know, the old one, you know, the metallic one, back in the time we had this, I still have it, it's in my bag, always. You running with it tomorrow? I don't think so. <laughs> See any infractions? I don't think so, but I will shout tomorrow, I mean, I will scream of happiness tomorrow, that will be different. But uh, yeah, I mean, some, some little by little, I think I got into running, but running was in my life when we used to train for basketball or for, but running the way I did today, it's kind of new for me and I just love it. What I love is like, okay, you train, but it's all the community thing around running. 
It's so, I mean, so cool yeah. because I can run with people that are so fast and I can run with like people that are really, you know, slow pace, enjoying the vibes, just move, you know, and this is really pleasant, really pleasant. So is tomorrow a celebration? Are you chasing a PR? Like, how are you feeling for tomorrow? That's a good question. I was waiting for that because I am team no pressure. I'm that. on that team too. Thank you. <laughs> team no oh, pressure. I, I love that. Team no pressure. I've been told, you know, I've been told like in Montreal that eventually it would be better to have this in, you know, in the heart because Boston looks not to be that easy. Yeah. Like, like New York City actually. But so I'm happy that New York was my first one because it was no pressure because the first one is a PB. Anyway, yeah, right? right? <laughs> okay, so knock it out. Say. Yeah. So, and Chicago was my PB, and then Boston is a celebration. I love that it, of everything, of like being able to run because I think we take that for granted a lot until we get injured, and I'm like, oh, yeah. I can't move. If oh, if only I could move, yeah, and that, that's it. So tomorrow is gonna be like this, and all my families here from Montreal. I love so that. I can't wait to see them at mile 22, you know. It's far, but it's far enough to like, you know, push until I see them and then I will get all the, you know, the vitamins until the end. That's it. I like that race strategy. Yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can come with me. Let's the last four miles take care of itself. <laughs> hey, okay. You know, you can join them mile 22 and we finish together. There you go, the good hey, vibes. That's okay, that's it. Do you have another marathon lined up after this, or what? We are still figuring out. Okay. Uh, because we need a marathon during the fall season. Four. Yeah, but actually, it's, we have all the plans for next uh, year. With Tokyo, we also have like an ultra marathon in South Africa. Yeah. And uh, the two oceans, you maybe know about it. And we need a marathon to be able to do it. So we are thinking maybe Amsterdam, Sydney. Yeah. Looks cool. Yeah. Because if, if they I, add it to the majors and it's number seven, that's the rumor on the absolutely, street. Absolutely, absolutely. So we are still figuring out, but something may happen. Yeah. I love your energy and your enthusiasm for Thank running. You. And so we're wishing you the best of luck tomorrow. Thank you so much. And enjoy the day, enjoy oh. the celebration and everything, but stay off your feet a little bit. I will. Oh, yeah. yeah. I will. I will. Believe me, I will. Thank, Thank you, you so much. So much. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah, one hooker guy. Okay. After. Hey, what's up? Hello. Good to see you. How's everything? Everything good. Yeah. All right. Good. What's your name? Where are you from? And what brings you to Boston? Okay, so my name is Jeffrey. I'm from Montreal also. Oh, yeah, we got there we go. invasion yeah. right now yeah, on the exactly. podcast. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm from, uh, I'm doing Boston. It's my eighth uh, marathon. Eighth, and okay. Yeah, the fourth major. So I'm excited. First Boston? Uh, first time Boston, yeah. What do you think? Uh, the the, vibe, is, the crazy. vibe is crazy. It's crazy. Like, it's a beautiful weekend and, uh, yeah, all the people and everything. It's nice. A lot of run crews, etc. So, I love it. Tell us a little bit about the running scene in Montreal. Like, is that also like a run crew heavy city? Yes, it's, uh, yeah, it's really big. Now we have a lot, a lot of crews. Um, like I'm part uh, of the Yamajo crew there, okay. and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a big family. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, what's the big goal for for tomorrow? Are you ener like celebration, energy, or is it like performance? Um, basically, it's for me it's celebration, but also performance in the sense that I will be pacing a friend okay. to help her be uh, break the three hours. Uh, oh, great! Wow. So yeah, we we. we I hope we will be able to do it uh, tomorrow, so yeah. Do you feel a little pressure when it's like, all right, this is the time goal and I have to, it's like holding 651s. I mean, speaking for me, like it's not easy. Yeah, yeah I feel, I, I feel the pressure, but I feel like um, I want to be the one who is calm because I will help her. So <laughs> I try to, to stay calm, yeah. <laughs> I, I think something that's like probably interesting is you probably in your head, Having a pace job, you're like, oh, I got this, I got this, but it is more pressure sometimes yeah, than. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like, yeah, it will be, uh, it will be tough even for me. Um, I know that we train together a lot, so it helps. So I feel like it will be a fun day tomorrow. 
uh, but it's yeah, it's still a pressure. I, I want to really like help her achieve her goal. How so. much uh, like positive talk are you going to be giving? Are you going to be quiet or are you going to be the, the um, voice in the head? Yeah. Like you got this, you can <laughs> yeah. do this. I'm more a quiet guy, like <laughs> pace, pacing, um, and even during the training, I was uh, I was a bit quiet. But um, yeah, just. Uh, I think I will try to see when she need, really needs the push. I'll try to give her the push, but uh, really calm, like be in the zone. <laughs> yeah. When's your next big one that you're gonna go for performance? Do you know yet? Uh, I don't know yet, but um, I I wanna do uh, London and Tokyo okay. uh, to just have the six stars. Yeah. But uh, I think yeah, if I have to do London or Tokyo next, I w I will try to aim for yeah my best time. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for thank popping you. by and, and sharing your story with All us. All right. Thank you. Good thank luck you. to Bye. you. Awesome. All right. We got more people coming on by. Come on in. Are you going out? in five minutes or do you have to go to the group run? All right. We've been live just chatting with random people. <laughs> What's your name? Where are you from? What's your Boston story? Uh, so I'm Chiara. I am Italian, but I grew up in Spain and I now live in Pittsburgh. Hey, okay, everywhere. Uh, oh my yeah, God. So All right. A little bit, uh, a little bit everywhere. It's kind of crazy. But um, how many I, passports do you have? I only have one, actually. Okay. I only have one passport. It's the Italian passport. Okay. Um, you can go anywhere you need to go with that. Honestly, yeah, it's great. It's easy peasy. Um, but my boss sister is when I moved to Pittsburgh, I had never run a marathon, never run a half. I was a casual runner, you know, 5Ks, 10Ks. And in order to then kind of meet people around and sort of integrate into the city, I started running with a running group, uh, the City of Bridges uh, Run Club. And then as I was running, everyone there was like, oh, we're all going to be doing the Boston, uh, the Pittsburgh uh, Marathon this, this spring. You should join. It's you a great race. It. It's a great race. It's hilly, right? Um, it is. It's got about almost 1,000 feet of elevation because oh of the gosh. bridges. Don't and catch me there. Yeah. It's, it's pretty hilly. Um, and it's at the, at the beginning of May. Wow. So it can be very hot or rainy, kind of similar to here. Um, but after a few months of running with them in the fall, I got... Um, kind of peer pressured into it and in May of 23 so last year I ran Pittsburgh for the first time kind of going into it hoping to get as close to 330 as possible because that was the standard I ended up crossing the finish line in 322 51 there you go and that's that awesome. that's my BQ story and so uh, since then I found I was like I can't wait to register for Boston and hopefully make the cutoff. Yeah, um, that's nerve-wracking. It was very nerve-wracking, but it, you know, thankfully I, my buffer was enough to get through and now I'm here. It's I, amazing, like, when you move somewhere new, finding the runners. Yeah. That's the move. It was really, it was what helped me in every sort of way, both open my sort of social bubble, get to explore a new city. I would have never seen as much of Pittsburgh as I have had it not been for them because the routes go everywhere. Like it's, they meet in different cafes and restaurants and spots. Yeah. So really got to explore and got to learn so much about running that I am now running at paces that I never thought were possible and with an ease and a social aspect of it that I never imagined or really envisioned for myself. It was really, really amazing. Yeah, I guess like that's a big thing too. It's like when people are trying to make friends and move to a new city, like as adults, like that's hard sometimes. And yeah. then, but it's like, if you find the runners, like, oh now, in addition to just like the workouts, like you end up spending so much time with, 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 with these people. Especially on like Saturday long runs, yes. where you're like, oh, we're running 20 miles at an easy pace. You could be there for three hours or depending on your pace, even four. Then everyone wants um, to get coffee afterwards or something yeah, like that. And it was very nerve wracking because I, it was something moving far, so far away because my family is still in Spain. So all my family is in Spain. None of my friends lived anywhere near uh, Pittsburgh. Um, none of my family is anywhere nearby, so I was completely alone after college. Um, and so being able to step outside of my comfort zone and join this group was one of the best things that I could have done. And I've made amazing friends 
Um, so many of them actually supporting me the entire way through my first marathon up until, you know, right now. And so it's it's been great. What are your tips, I guess, for people who, like, maybe are trying to find, like, that community? It's like, you see the Instagram post, like, you find out what the Run Club is, and then you show up, and it's like there's an element where then you have to take the next step and I, introduce yourself. I almost canceled about five times before joining. Like, I signed up, and then I almost canceled so many times before actually going there. And when I got there, I was so nervous. But I think ultimately is you know, knowing that everyone who's there is doing something like voluntarily, like no one is forced to run, you know, um, everyone's there because they want to be there. And I just, you know, starting to introduce myself to just one person that was there or present introducing myself to like the smaller sort of, instead of the larger group as a whole, finding like the one or two people sort of off to the side and introducing there and then very slowly building that up. But it, it takes a lot of courage and just kind of accepting that like, yeah, this is this is uncomfortable, but when was growing? Uh, this was something that I heard uh, someone else say is like, when was growing and learning ever comfortable? Right. It's hard to make adult friends. Yep. It is, it is so hard. Yeah, it's hard. Oh my gosh. So when you find someone, it's like, oh my God, are you also a masochist like me and yeah. spend hours on end and you love to eat six bagels at once? Count me in. Did we just become best friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've just become best buddies. <laughs> Are you taking down six bagels before tomorrow? I'm taking down a lot of focaccia. Oh, I'm going bad. to Italy and eating a lot of pasta and focaccia. What's the goal tomorrow? 310. There we go. Let's go. 310. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks Thank for stopping you. by. Thank you so much. It was lovely to talk to yeah. you both. Go, go get it tomorrow. We Thank got good you. conditions for it. Thank you. Oh, awesome. my gosh. Thank you so much. We're, we're, Tobar's awesome. got to go. Yeah, of course. Thanks for coming up. You too. Good luck. (laughs) Sorry, I know you have the group run. Yeah, no, it's okay. (laughs) No worries. All right. Keeping it going. What's your name? Where are you from? What's what's your Boston story? Fantastic. So my name my name is Jose Antonio Tobar Sandoval. Love that. It's a mouthful. I go by a lot of accents on this podcast. I'm working from Mexico. I've been living in the US for the last ten years. Uh, and my Boston story is the story of what I named the triple unicorn. Hey, I'm ready for it. <laughs> so um, the Boston Marathon is a unicorn, right? And there is also an unsanctioned cycling of the Boston Marathon at midnight. So hundreds of people go to the start line of the Boston Marathon uh, the night before. The route is already up. There are no cars. And they cycle their way from Hampton Town to Boston. And I've done that for you know several years, and I thought it would be fun to do that, and then do the mar- the actual marathon the next day. I thought it would be fun. Adding to that becomes the third part of the triple unicorn. There is a foundation called Tough Rock. This foundation raises money for the families of those that lost their lives, uh, lost their lives in service, whether it's first responders, military. And what they do is that they do a weighted uh, marathon. Mm-hmm. So 26 miles with a 35 pound pack. That happens the day before the marathon, today, Sunday. And they actually give you a Boston Marathon medal. But the ribbon is the American flag okay. instead of the classic, you know, yellow and blue. So I thought, how fun would it be <laughs> to do the three in a row? So rock 26 miles, rest for a little bit. Cycle 26 miles at midnight, rest for a little bit, and run 26. Wow. What was the hardest? The hardest thing was trying to sleep in between. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're very tired, but you're very also kind of like anxious about it, right? Like, yeah. I want to get my feet up. I want to get some food. Um, and I think that was the hardest part, the weight between. I feel like if it was like back to back to back, it will suck more, but it will also suck less like emotionally and yeah. mentally. Yeah. You can never rest. Right back into the next one. I, I think it would be easier. Yeah. Does that change your perspective then when you come just for just for Boston Marathon? Um, I think it's different. I honestly have, I'm, I myself, I'm an ultra runner. Okay. And I've never really, marathons are an acquired taste. Yeah. Because like, I like more being in the woods and stuff. I never really raced a marathon until last year. And I really pushed myself. And now I have a lot of 
newfound respect for people that actually do race it, not just participate, but race yeah. intensely, it's very hard. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that for me, what I just told you feels more within my realm. Yeah. Than going really hard for those runners that go for a sub three or something like this. Man, that's that's tough. <laughs> do you have any other crazy ideas that you're working on? <laughs> I'm always working on something. I'm always working on something. So. Somebody today uh, just told us that every year they do, they spell Boston. Really? Uh, like in their Strava. Oh, wow. Every year on the 15th, uh, you know, which is the, was the date of the bombing in 2013. So they do every year. I'm like, I wonder how big we can make that. How big of a Boston sign we can make. Like, could we do like a 26 mile Boston sign. Wow. I've, on Strava. The yeah. Strava art stuff is very impressive, where like, it's not just like covering the distance, but like you can mess up very easily on like one of the turns or like, I don't understand how you dot an I on it. Like shut your GPS off and uh, just Is that appear. How you do it? I don't know. Just, then, just throw your phone really hard to another person yeah. in another block. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that is really impressive. And then like, I think the added element of just the letters, you have to like, all right, is this, uh, the S is gonna be complicated. And then how do you go about the T? And so that, that sure. is a cool one. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, but no, I have. I always say, you know, people that are running Boston, it's 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 a very deserved spot. Like whether you're fundraising or or qualifying, you know, I think Boston is so special. I think that there's nothing. Just running Boston is special and crazy enough. What you have to go through yeah. to be here this weekend. Amazing. You know, everyone is like, it's interesting as you we're touching on like the idea of the performance angle versus the participation as we're sitting down and talking with everyone. Some people, like, their goal was just to be here, and now that they're here, right. let's have fun. And others, like, no, I'm going for this one time. So there's a lot of stories out there, 30,000 of them. Yeah. Yeah, I have a very good friend of mine that um, he's a very accomplished runner, sub three, constantly, except for Boston. Really? Okay, so that's evading so him. That's, that's the unicorn. That's a splinter yeah. in his mind. He keeps coming back for that sub three, man. So, yeah. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for popping by. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah this is awesome. And thanks for putting all these stories together. I cannot wait to hear all of them. Yeah, no, we've been on. You got two hours worth of stories awesome. to catch up on. That's so that'll be keep... a good drive for the next ultra. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> thanks so much. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Have a good day, dude. All right. Amazing. Yes. Hi. How's it going? Good. I'm a huge Great. fan, by the way. I just oh gotta my say. gosh! Legs no are, way. Legs are feeling good. Oh, <laughs> actually, well, they're yes. fresh, but they're. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, okay. what's your name? Where are you from? And um, what brings you to Boston? My name is Lynn Ingold, and I'm from Salisbury, Maryland. Um, what brings me to Boston is I'm running the Boston Marathon. This will be my third. Thank you. My third consecutive. It would have been my fourth consecutive. Um, but of course COVID happened <laughs> um, and that's kind of my Boston story and I know that's what you guys are talking about today. Yeah, I guess um, like what was your path and road to get here? Um, it was quite a it was quite a journey. I, I started marathoning in 2015 and never considered myself somebody who could qualify. That was something the fast people did and um, so in 2018 at the St. George Marathon, which is one of my favorite marathons, um, I wasn't even trying to qualify, and I broke four hours, and um, I, I forget what my time was, but um, actually a friend texted me and said, oh my gosh, you qualified for Boston. I was like, what? How did I, how did I do that? Um, and so that was like, wow, this is something I'm actually capable of. Um, I only had like a minute and change buffer, so I knew I wouldn't get in. Um, so that was now the the goal was okay. Yeah. Now it's so to, confusing. Like, why have the BQ different <laughs> right. than? And then you don't get to go. Yeah. But um, so then that was the goal. Was okay. Now I have to work harder, shave some time off. So I worked to get that five minute buffer. But then um, again, I was going to run St. George the following year, which is in October, and that September when registration happened with uh, the BIA dropped the times. So, so that it was like all of a sudden, oh, now I have to get a 10 minute buffer. Yeah. Well, I did, I got my 10 minute buffer, oh, wow. but uh, well, it was actually a five minute buffer, but it was based on the old yeah, time, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So um, so then again, I only had like a one minute oh, buffer again. I was like, oh, that's probably still not gonna cut it. Uh, no, but, um, so I was like, I better run another marathon. So I, in, this was in 2019, um, I ran the Light at the End of, tu of the Tunnel Marathon out in, that? it's um, near Seattle. It's about an yeah. hour from Seattle. 
Um, awesome, awesome race. Um, and I got my my five minute buffer. That okay, so you felt good, cross, like yes. that might be enough. I was like, okay, I'm actually going to get to run the Boston Marathon. And so I um, registered for 2020, got into 2020, oh, no. bought all the stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, and then what was it like three weeks before the marathon? Guess what? We have to reschedule it. But I still held out hope that it would happen in September. You know, that was the original plan. Um, and I know I'm not alone. I know this happened to tons of people. But um, but this is just my story, you know, where I, I worked so hard to get to, to that and finally got it and then to have it taken away. Um, and then when the 2021 happened, because the cutoff was, I think it was like seven minutes or something. And so it wasn't enough time for me to, I didn't make it in for 2021. Um, luckily for 2022, because it was um, less, were less people applied no and there was no then. cutoff. Yep. I, I ran Chicago in 2019 with a one minute buffer because I wasn't trying to qualify because I was like, oh, I'm already getting in, you know. So I wasn't necessarily trying to get that, but luckily that got me in for 2022 and that was my first Boston. And I qualified in Boston and then I qualified again in Boston. Yeah, so there's a long it's, journey. It's to, such a journey. Did yeah. it live up to the hype? <laughs> it did. It you did. worked so hard yes. so many years. It was yeah. everything you hoped and more. Oh, um, amazing. I, I, what I love so much is that um, the people in all the towns that you run through just embrace the marathon. I mean, they... It feels like the whole state of Massachusetts just embraces it. I come from a small town, and we have kind of a small town marathon. People don't care that there's a marathon happening. There's no crowds on the streets or anything. Um, so the first year I ran Boston, I was just amazed. You know, there's people up on their rooftops cheering. There's kids in strollers with signs. And, and you know, it's, it's such a vibe. It's such a, it has the small town vibe as opposed to Chicago. Um, or New I haven't run New York, but you know where it's it's great because it's screaming crowds yeah. and people. But this is that small town vibe. I just love it, and I just I you know last year I felt like I was just smiling the whole time. It's such a such an amazing experience. It really is. What is your family made of? Just sort of like you know this big effort you put in towards this goal of like I got to get to Boston, got to get to Boston, and now finally achieving it. Like is it a families out to cheer for you like on, on Marathon Monday like what, what, were, what was their whole thought process and all um, like, oh. honestly um, well my husband's my biggest supporter um, he ran Mar uh, Boston in 2012 one of the hottest Hot year. years yes yeah. so he trained for like a super fast time and didn't get the time he wanted but still ran amazing um, he's an amazing runner but um, so he's my biggest supporter but honestly my friends um, my friend Kathy who's right over there um, she saw me through this whole process of COVID you know the cancellation and um, she she knows she knows what I went through the friend the people who run understand they get yeah, it yeah. you know um, when when they canceled Boston in 2020, I remember saying, well, I've been doing all this training. I'm gonna run it, I'm gonna, you know, from my house. So I did, I ran 26.2 miles. I didn't race it. On the but day that it was supposed yeah, to be? Yeah, I did, yeah. And then, and, um, and then when they rescheduled it in September and did the virtual, I was like, well, I guess I'll do the yeah, virtual. <laughs> you know, it's like, What's damn it, I want my medal, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I did it, even though it was like, well, it's, it's, it is what it is, you know? Um, but and I know a lot of people also had to go through that same that same thing, and it was it was disappointing for everybody. But it's so good to to be back uh, to see everything pretty much back to normal, what we're what we're used to, and all the crowds and everything. Yeah. So what's going to make a successful happy day for you tomorrow? Um, if it's not hot, <laughs> <laughs> no. If I'm I'm um, I guess if I if I run like a three forty four would be would be good for me. Um, but really just, just finishing and feeling, feeling good. Um, legs are feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> I have a hoodie. Legs are feeling good. You yeah. can say that in the last 5k. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> my legs are not feeling yeah. good. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So honestly, I know everybody's kind of worried about the potential heat. So that's, that's my, my, if it, if it's not what they're making it out to be, then I'll be, I'll be happy. Look, the, the benefit is if it's warm, there's a lot of crowd. Right. Yeah. You know, you'll get plenty of fans yelling yes. for you, the yeah. warmer it is. Yeah, and maybe they'll have, um, you know, sponges and, you know, stuff like that to cool off. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, as a City of Super fan, like, have we gotten you hooked on some track stuff, too? I love track and field. Yeah. 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 Same. I, we love track and field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. 
Yeah. Well, thank you so much for stopping by, thank sharing you. your Boston story with us. And thank you for you all the best me. of luck tomorrow. Yeah, thanks That's for having awesome. me. Thanks for doing all this. This is great. I love the podcast. You guys are awesome. Oh, thank all you right. so much. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. All right. We'll bring on like one or two more people, I guess. Yeah. All right, yeah. Two more people. Then we'll close it off. Yeah. I've been here for two hours, but I'm having a, I'm having a really good time. All right. Who are you? What's your name? Where are you from? What's your Boston story? Uh, my name is Caleb Files. I'm from Washington, D.C. Okay. A uh, member of Northeast Track Club. Um, I've been Rob running. Rob Perez runs for them. Yes, uh, yeah. Uh, I've been running for a year. I started in January of last year. Oh, Wait, really? Yeah, I did five marathons last year. <laughs> we have 10 on deck this year. Wait, you just like dove in head first and you're like, all right, I'm doing them all. Yeah, so I weighed 265 pounds. What? Lost 120 pounds during COVID. Uh, mostly on Peloton bike, uh, and then had a transfer addiction from like food to uh, the Peloton, and was like, this is really unhealthy. I was doing four-hour sessions a day. Uh, wanted to like get something, get around people post-COVID, so I started running. Uh, Cherry Blossom was my first race last year. Uh, first ever race. First ever race. What uh, is that feeling like in that starting starting line? When my mouth gonna, is wide open. Oh, no, right no, now. I'm, I'm like really shocked. shocked. I'm, I'm processing a lot yeah. of things right now. Yeah, I had no idea what to expect. Uh, finished in 76 minutes last year. Uh, ran Cherry Blossom last weekend and PR'd at 65 minutes. Wow. So, yeah, cut 10 minutes off my time. Uh, I've run a Boston qualifier. Um, this will be my second star with my third one coming up in uh, New York. Uh, and I'm running Sydney in September. So, wait, wait, wait. The running, like... <laughs> Where do we go from here? Why did you start doing it? Like, I, I guess you said you weighed, a, you weighed a lot at one point yeah. and then it was just like... All right, this is going to be it. I, I wanted something that I could do with people but not have to speak to people. Okay. Uh, so uh, when I joined Northeast Track Club, the, I actually just went to the shakeout, rate, the shakeout run on the Saturday before Cherry Blossom uh, and kind of like went and did the run and disappeared. Uh, and I met Vonks, uh, one of the co-founders of Northeast Track Club there, and she encouraged me to come out. Uh, so I would go to Saturday long runs and just like go show up, do the run. Uh, and she was like, we have track night, you know, so I would go to track night, but I would like do the entire workout before track night started because I was so overwhelmed with the amount of people. Uh, and so I just posted about like my year of running and, and Vonk commented on there. She goes, I remember when you would just come and do the workout and disappear. Uh, and so really have enjoyed embracing the community aspect of it over the past year. Uh, I've opened up and now I'm running. Uh, I started with a seven minute pace group down to the five minute pace group. Uh, have a coach, and <laughs> we're just doing the thing. Wait. The progression is I am insane. shocked. So, all right. I don't even know where to start here. Yeah. First of all, I think you were like a prime candidate for a running brand to do one of those videos on of yeah. just like your journey. So I'm putting that into the universe yeah. for you if Thank you're you. interested in that. When you, so you come to the runs, yeah. you're like nervous to be around everyone. Yeah. When did you have that moment of like, this is what I'm meant to be doing? Because now you're committing a lot of your life to running. 10 and marathons in a year. Time and money. Time, yeah. money, everything. And you, we were just talking before, you're a busy guy. You've got a couple jobs. Like, yeah. when did you realize that this is the place I'm supposed to be? Yeah, I think just getting out there and hitting the goals that were being set for me by my coach and really just leaning into those things. Um, understanding that there's something bigger than me. Uh, running is not just about myself, but it's about the effort and the community that you build. Uh, and I think when I started getting messages from people, uh, when I started to tell my story and they were like, you inspire me, you know, like those pieces of inspiration from my weight loss journey to, to starting to run, uh, really made me think that there's something here. Uh, being, having the opportunity to like encourage others to get fit, to get, out there to move their bodies really just uh, made me want to do it even more. That competitive fire, like, is that, how do you turn that on tomorrow, I guess? Like, does it just come naturally at a, at, when you're in a race setting now? Yeah, I was just talking with friends. Uh, no goal tomorrow. 
<laughs> I have Eugene but in the two training's weeks. been going well? Yeah, I have Eugene in two weeks. Wow. Uh, so how, you, how many more marathons you got lined up the rest of the year? He's doing 10 this year. 10? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. That's what I have. He, he, Chris blacked out. He forgot that he shared that already. It's <laughs> my annual mileage. Yeah, yeah Boston, Eugene, uh, Grandma's, Jack and Jill in Washington State. Uh, I'm taking August off. I got Sydney. Oh, thank God for August. Yeah, yeah thank Sydney God. in September. Uh, Chicago. Um, CIM, New York, and Philadelphia. It's okay. fun, but an expensive ha like habit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Calling all sponsors yeah, for yeah, right? this journey. Yeah. When you're thinking about like your training yeah. for this journey, how, how does your coach even... Yeah, how do you stretch How do you do that? Yeah, he laughs at me. Uh, I, I text him and say, thanks for putting up with me. Uh, I texted him earlier today and said, you know, I only did 20 miles last week. That should be good. And he's like, I didn't have that on the schedule for you. It was supposed to be a taper. And I'm like, I'm fine. Wait, it's 20 in the week or like for a long run? No, I just did 20 in the week. Okay, okay. okay. But he wanted me lower than that because he knows. So what's your weekly mileage? 40 to 60. Wow. Yeah. And you've I've been that healthy. Many marathons. Wow. I have no injuries, thank God. Like, All right, did you do strength training? Yeah. Like, are we... So that's what we're adding in this year. Okay. Um, I did, like, going to Barry's and doing a double floor, but, like, real no <laughs> organized strength training. Uh, and so trying to add that in and figure out what that looks like. So, all right, so now 10 this year, 20 yeah. next year, 15 next year? I think we're going to try an ultra next year. Uh, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. I can already do 42K, so why not 50K? So you are very involved in like your local running community. You're here in Boston. You wanted to be on this stage. Do you like connect with the pro side of the sport? We really cover the pro side a lot. This yeah, is our yeah. first time getting you on. Like, do you, yeah. Are you aware of like just kind of like I know it's like Kipchoge is like the easy person to just like pick out and be like, oh, I know who that like, is. Do you have any you know heroes you look up to, or is it more yeah. of the community? I ended up here today because of the queer run. Uh, so Cal, uh, I'm a non-binary runner myself. Uh, Cal is a big inspiration and just taking that on. Uh, Nikki Hiltz as well. Uh, just having a place in the community for queer people and non-binary folks has really meant a lot. And sometimes it means hitting up a race director and saying, hey, I don't have a space here. Can you open up your uh, non-binary category? And lots of times they're like, what does that mean? And I say, log into the back end of Run Sign Up and say that you're open to non-binary runners. It's not that I want uh, the accolades or the prize money. It's that I want to be able to run it in my, as my authentic self. Uh, and so having people like Cal and Nikki out there really pushing uh, for inclusivity in the sport has meant that I have open doors as well. Amazing. I love that. Yeah, we had Cal on earlier, and Cal said something very similar where it's all about just, you know, last year there was 30-something runners in the non binary category at Boston. And this year there's 54, I think. Amazing. They yeah. said, so as that progression grows, I think you mentioned a little bit, you're kind of posting about your journey on yeah. social. Like, how do people follow you? What do yeah, you like yeah. to share? Yeah. Caleb runs DC on all socials. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, I'm pretty authentic there when I'm having a bad day. It's, it's on there when I'm doing really good work. It's on there. Uh, I think open to like any questions anybody has. Uh, but yeah, I just try to be authentic and, and show the, the side of it that is, uh, and it's running. You should change it to Caleb Bruns DC, Caleb Bruns Boston, Caleb Bruns like you just have every single marathon. No, just drop DC, just Caleb runs. Caleb runs. Caleb yeah. just runs. Yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks. Thanks, thanks so much for sharing so your much. story. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it. Thank you. Sweet. One more. You. Hey. I know this guy. So he'll close us out. All right. This has been really What's fun, up, guys. Hello, Yosef. My Hi, man. Yosef. So, for people watching, Yosef is a training partner of mine back to 2018, I guess, yeah. would be like our yeah, first year really running is. together. Yeah. And works at the Today Show, lives in New York. Uh, you've been a guest on the City Smack podcast before. You have like, there's a whole episode dedicated to him sharing his story. Remember that. 2019. Yeah. From our hotel rooms in Berlin. Similarly, I guess so like the guests we just had sit down with us where it's like, you know, starts off as a weight loss journey. And then from there, just kind of, you get hooked into it. And now. It's trapped. The last couple of years, yeah. You've been yeah. performance trapped focused. Trapped is, is probably the more accurate yeah, yeah, word. It's yeah, it's trapped. You know, sucked in. Yeah. But now you finally, before this, hit a BQ. Yes. Made it here. Made it. Never thought this was in the realm of possibility. You know, when we all first started training, it was kind of like me 
Chris and two of our other friends, Zach and Ryan, who's now my coach, and who were all much faster than me. And we all were training together for Berlin at the time and kind of had like this like running friendly competition of who would be the fastest marathoner. And for a time it was Zach and then it was Ryan, Ryan and Chris. And we were then both like off the back for a bit. Like it was back. a gap. And then I hit my BQ. It was thrilling. And then uh, I was the, 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 the reigning faster, yeah. fastest marathoner in our crew until till young Chris had his, his Houston sub three unbelievable marathon this past year but um yeah it's really been a journey i never thought i would be q to run in boston i yeah. think i'd get here eventually uh, in some way but to be q was something special so tomorrow celebration celebration um but still would like to run within the realm of my capabilities you know i definitely have goals in mind you know one we share one we don't you know I'd love to run under 320 you know i've, I've yeah. trained for it and i know i can do it as long as the rest of my body cooperates so It'll be fun regardless, and yeah. What scares you the most about the Boston course? We've had a lot of experienced people come on. Yeah. But for your first Boston, what part have you like looked at the course? You're like, oh, it's heartbreak. It's. I guess what scares me the most is, is this my camera. Yeah. Yeah. I guess what scares me the most. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you're <laughs> work, you're work in takes media. Over, Get sorry. in there. What scares me the most is not the hills, because you know we've run hills, we've trained for hills. It's the placement of the hills. The yeah. fact that it looks like a lot of people can get complacent from miles 1 to 16. And then 16 to 21 just looks like this, as uh, Coach Welsh just really, really accurately described to me as someone who's run it before. He's like, you, you climb, you plateau. You climb, you plateau. You never really regain the, the recovery that we're all used to when we go up hills to come down. What goes up must not come down right away in yeah. Boston. What goes up plateaus, apparently. And then we go up plateau until 21, and then you just go up again, and then finally a little, you know, a little respite. But I guess that's it's what scares net me. What's that? It's a net downhill race. Yeah, kind of crazy. Sure. But like, you don't think of it that way. Yeah, the, the word I've never net run here. Boston, so I <laughs> the word net here is not as comforting to me as it should sound in a in a generalized like running setting. Net downhill. I don't know. Those hills scare me. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing you personally, <clears throat> you've had some injuries last like year or so. Yeah. How much does that factor into just sort of like celebrating and getting to the starting line healthy in one piece? Because it was like there were moments where it's yeah. like, I mean, even going out for like a 10 minute jog like hurts or like you, can, you couldn't even do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've all been there. Everyone's had injuries and you know, it is the second you have an injury, it pops really like, up. Ah, that's it. I'm never running again. It's never happening. And then, you know, I, I've slipped a disc in the past and. I had knee surgery for a torn meniscus, and especially recovering from that, you know, anyone who's had meniscus repair surgery or ACL, you're just sitting there, you know, recovering those first two weeks, like, I'm never running again. It's just not happening. And then eventually you get there, you know, with a, with a good support crew, and it, it makes it all that much more sweeter and meaningful for today, tomorrow, just to, like, get here and realize, like, you've overcome some serious physical ailments. Yeah. yeah. I have a tactical question. Hit me. You work at the Today Show, I do, yeah. which is early in the morning, early, so yeah. when do you run? When do I run? Great question. Um, great question. Generally, I run at night, evenings. Okay. I'll come home after work and nap. Big napper here. His sleep schedule is one of the weirdest things in the world. I, honestly, other than our other guest who wakes up at 3.45 in the morning and runs. <laughs> I know. I, I know tell this me, is, what do you actually want to hear? This one's weirder. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear it. So, so I work, what time do you wake up? Uh, I wake up around 4.30, and I work from about 5 to 11, generally. Okay and do a few other things that most people can't do during business hours. You know, like I'll do the gym first, any appointments I have, eat, but I'll nap every day for like two to three hours from like two to five. Reach. That nap is precious to you. It's, it's classic. I mean, it's, it's, it's so clutch because it allows me to be like a functional human yeah. past 8 p.m. And as- So then you nap, then run. I nap, rejoin society around like 5 p.m. And then, uh, you know, if that means running with friends or going out, whatever it is, yeah, I'll run in the evenings or I'll do track on Tuesdays. Except for weekends, I'll do my, my long run in the mornings when I can. But yeah, otherwise, it's evening runs. Mostly not my choice, but... Yeah. You make it happen. Yeah, make it happen. I think it's really impressive just hearing this BQ story because there's a lot of people who feel like it's so far away and it's so unachievable. And like just hearing how special this is to you like yeah do you need like final parting thoughts on Absolutely. like getting yeah, to drop, this start line yes, back like, to the camera back, right. like words of wisdom here's the thing i started running to lose weight and eventually once i got into it i'm gonna go back to them once i got into it 
you know, I started to get a little faster, but it wasn't until I really put my mind to it. I started at a 348 marathon in 2017 in New York. And then once I grouped up with people who are like-minded and wanted to train with similar goals, I started cutting time. And to go from 348 to 304 is what really keeps me motivated. Like I dropped 44 minutes of my marathon, not because I'm, I'm a professional runner, obviously, or even like elite or sub elite. Like I'm just a regular runner who put in the work, put in the training. Like, like my body isn't like the typical like thin runner's body. Like it, it wouldn't be the body you'd be like, oh, he running, he ran in college. Like he's he's a marathoner. You know? But I, I got there, you know, I got there, and it, it took a lot of work. And anyone can really do a marathon. You know, you just got to put in the time. You. Even you, even you. That's true. Even you. So that, those are my parting words. That's you know, a real way. we've all heard it before, but honestly, like if I did it, anyone can do it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Yosef, thanks for closing us out. Yeah. As, like, My pleasure. Most inspirational yeah. guest we've had today. Uh, this is going to be the luck. way we catch up, and I'll, I'll be happy to come chat with you every time. <laughs> yeah, always on the pod. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Yosef. My you. pleasure. Yeah. Good luck. See you guys. Thank you. All right. I think that does it. We've been on for over two hours and spoken to so many awesome people here at we the Boston. We could be here all day. We could be here all day. There's 30,000 plus people that we can interview, so uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh Tomorrow, we are back on the airwaves, 9 a.m., before the Elite Race starts at 9.30. Uh, and we'll be streaming live on YouTube all, uh, until the pros finish up. We're going to be giving our hot takes, our reactions, live in real time. So tune into the City's Mag Watch Along and get all of our reactions and analysis in real time. So, Dana, I love marathons. I love marathons. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow, bright and early. Get some Sidious Cafe coffee going and some Olipop. Yep. See you tomorrow. Bye.